I'm Rizlar. I'm Frosty. As nobody's really engaged quite yet. Yep, oh, there we have a bit of- Oh, is that a triple stun for the Mystic? And welcome back to the Value Pack. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Value Pack. Uh, first things first, let's get this out of the way. There might be some weird shit going down with this episode. We are trying a new way of recording that hopefully will make things a little bit easier. But uh, So if things seem different, if things seem weird, that would be why. Hopefully it does not seem less quality. From our end, right now, it seems like it should be uh, very similar uh, quality. Maybe a little bit less, but it should still be very high quality. So, hopefully everything goes well with that. But in case things do get weird, that would be why. We are trying a new way of recording. Our guest today, the the wonderful, the beautiful, the... Uh, I don't know, what other adjectives can I use to describe this person? The, the, the powerful... The, the 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 hungry i don't know blue it's blue everybody welcome blue hi i didn't know it was beautiful thank you i appreciate that <laughs> what's going on everybody <laughs> uh, do you go you're bdo blue or what the fuck blue or hey it's blue, blue or blue. i am blue you can just call me blue you know like blue. the song um blue da ba dee da ba die <laughs> Now, uh, for those people out there who maybe don't know who you are, can you just kind of explain? All right. Well, uh, well, I'm Blue. Um, I've been playing video for since KR Beta. Uh, a lot of people know me from playing Korea and North America, among other regions. But the biggest thing I've done in terms of video stuff was data mining uh, a lot of the hidden stats, which is what you guys can see in your game now today. But yeah, that's me. Um, I play a lot of MMOs, mostly shooters from before I started MMOs, and yeah. Yeah, so you're kind of like the... Uh, I think you might be the only person who like has actually made a really significant change to this game, right? Because, I mean, they made hidden uh, hidden numbers like not hidden anymore because you were releasing them, basically, right? I guess, yeah, but I mean, I, we got to give credit to Men Up at some point. Uh, them holding Valencia for so long kind of made the devs want to tra try to change the, the way Siege is to try and prevent that from happening again, too. That's true, I suppose, but I, I mean specifically like one person, though, you know? Yeah, I feel you. It's Single biggest like, uh, impact? Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, like Tom Brady, you know? Like Tom Brady has oh, okay. changed the NFL in a lot of ways, but... He's, he's like so have a lot of teams, but he's a person, you know. Who Brady did? I got you. Football is um, the one where you score the soccer goals, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, no, it's I'm the one kidding. where you, I'm kidding. you I don't, kick I don't, it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so let me. Uh, I'm trying to think like the best way to go into this. So first, I guess let's get started on your how you started BDO, why you started BDO, and do you still play BDO? All right, so that's actually a longest story. So I started actually because, like, like I said, I used to do a lot of uh, FPS stuff. Um, I played competitive FPS a little bit, and then I started working in the esports industry. And a friend of mine in the esports industry was sh sh actually showed me sort. Uh, what is it? Was it sort of online? I think it was that he showed me, and I thought it was like such a cool anime. I was, and so I started looking up games like sort of online, and then. Somebody had, uh, one of the posts had mentioned Black Desert Online. They said it was like a Korean MMO, blah, blah. So I started looking at it during the beta, and I played a little bit casually in Korea when it was uh, released in Korea. And that's kind of when I started. And then when NA was released, I was actually going to play Arcage first, but like within the first like five minutes of Arcage, um, I was like, oh, this is super pay to win. I mean, Korea. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, never mind, going straight to BDO. So on NA release, I played BDO. I got in during the beta, played, got into Gatekeeper, and was in Gatekeeper at launch. And that was my first, this was like my first hardcore MMO where I was like hardcore playing. And of course, Gatekeeper was the first uh, hardcore guild that I was in. They took the game, game way too serious, but I 
guess it's kind of thanks to them that I like I liked I kept playing as much as I did. And do I still play BDO? The only times I log in now are for Arena Varsha duels, um, um, because that's the only thing I enjoy now in the game. It's just the competitive PvP aspect. Um, and the cool thing about the Duelist Discord is everyone does Arena Varsha with trial characters, so you don't really have to worry about any like gear difference and stuff. So that's really the only time I log in now. Did you um? What class did you start when you started playing, and what classes have you played, and what do you uh, play now? I started Sorg. I think Sorg was the first class I made in the KR beta. Um, and KR, I played Ranger and Sork on release. I've, I actually wanted to play Sork uh, on during NA, but when I got in Gatekeeper, they were super hardcore, and they're like, no, you can't play Sork. We have too many Sorks. You have to play a Ranger if you want to join the guild. And in my mind at the time, I was like, oh, that's how hardcore guilds are. They have like certain you know comps, so okay, I'll play Ranger. And I actually just fell in love with Ranger a lot more. Um, and I played Ranger pretty much... The rest of my time in BDO until I was banned in 2017. And then when I went to Korea as my main region after that, I swapped to Mystic. I played a DP Mystic for a little bit. Um, and then Lon came out and I just fell in love with Lon because she fit my playstyle so well. I've been playing Lon ever since. I did pick up Archer on release as well. I really liked Archer. And so I played him too, but I just feel like Lon plays, fits a lot more to my playstyle. So now I play like Lon and Archer. But I played almost I, every class. Say your play style is to run for your life until your grabs off cooldown. Nah, <laughs> I liked. I actually really like to be like. In terms of as a duelist, I like to kind of because I mean, even if you don't have a grab up, you can still kind of keep up pressure um, with Lawn. Depending, obviously, depending on your gear, but because of the way that her skills are, you can still keep up pressure. You can still be in like do some trades from time to time, and you, you still have a lot of CC potential with her unawakening that are protected, and you can still, there's still other ways to catch them without your grab, just grab's the best way, but I personally don't think right. you have to run away when you feel the grab all the time. You were, were you, you were a GM in DGAF when I first met you personally, but were you always a GM, like after... <laughs> No. Did you become a GM? What's the deal with that? So that's actually a pretty funny story. So DGAF was originally after after um, I had stopped playing for like a little bit of time in 2016 after Valencia was released because the officers and gatekeeper kind of took things way too serious. Uh, Silta and Warden. I think a lot of people from the Eden days know of them because of the memes. Um, they just took DGAF the game way too serious. Is the initials for don't give a fuck, right? That was the guild name? Yeah. DGAF? Yeah. So from Gatekeeper, when I stopped playing because of that, some friends of mine from Gatekeeper, like my closest friends, they actually started DGAF, uh, Sol and his girlfriend at the time, who I think they're married now, so congrats to you guys. Um, Sol and Sarah, along with um, Uvo, I guess, I think he was in, last I heard he was in Vixens, I don't know if he still plays, but yeah, they started DGAF, and so when they were like, oh, you should come back to the game, come join, so they were the guild leader, and so I joined. I became an officer, and they they were like, "Yeah, we want to take the." There's a lot of guild drama there because, like, they told me that they wanted to do competitive. They wanted to get into siege and stuff. So, I had made friends and like kind of made the way to get us into siege. And the other the other like co GM, I guess you can say, didn't want to do siege. So they started like spreading rumors about me. And so then, at one point, I guess um, when I decided to leave because I was like, I I want to do siege, so I'm going to leave. They started to say that I was trying to poach their members. So I was kind of known as a poacher at the time, even though I didn't try to poach anybody. And as fate would have it, you know, um, a few months later, I guess the soul actually supposedly got banned for fish botting. And the guild died. And then I kind of turned around and was given the guild and became the guild leader of a guild that I was considered. Uh, trying to poach people. Hey, so who's who's spreading rumors now? <laughs> I don't know, man. It was just like it was just unfortunate thing because it was like I had friends in the guild and I tried to stay in the Discord, but um, I guess somebody was telling the guild leader that I was trying to poach poach members, so he kicked me from the Discord and stuff. And yeah, so I became um, yeah, it just kind of sucks, but it's cool though because then 
like I said, later on, once uh, the guild died, I just became the guild leader of the guild. And restarted Gaff's it. still around? Are you still GM? Yeah, I am still GM, but no, it's actually, it died, because I, I went to Xbox, and I just didn't have time. So I had the guys from DGAF, they ended up having them merge into... Man, I don't even remember what guild they merged into. But you're I the guess... only GM I've ever met that's worse than Reslar, dude. Feels... Well, no, no, like, well, okay, so look, like, I put them into a guild that, like, they actually got pretty strong, I guess, but it was around the same time Mercs became a thing, and they kept going up against people who had a lot of Mercs in their, like, the, the actual official Merc system. They kept going up against those guys, and then I guess the, the officers there kind of just stopped playing, so the, that guild died. Um, but yeah, no, what happened was I started playing video Xbox a lot, and I couldn't really, between streaming, playing video Xbox and stuff, I couldn't really put the time into still being a GM and doing those activities. So that's why I made sure to find, at the time, a good home. It was a guild we had an alliance with, so I made sure they were all able to get into that guild. So, like, the players who wanted to keep playing and stuff wouldn't be stuck in a dead guild. Um, but sadly, that didn't work out. But I was, like, already on Xbox. So I was like, sorry, guys, can't help. But yeah. Is it is it true? This is true or false? This is a rumor I heard that DGAF died the day you lost to me in a one v one for a node in Naya. I feel like you're totally just making this up now. But no, this is I off the cuff. I, I but I heard <laughs> whoa, this. Whoa, I wasn't whoa. gonna bring this up because I know it's you know it's sore no, sore subject no. for you guys. I would I would like to say go on record saying no, that's not true. But it should be <laughs> stated that one v one was a best of one and. Uh, I think this is what you said earlier. It took like eight minutes, right? Now, An you're a stork. I'm a lawn. I was actually way under geared compared to you in that fight, and it still took you eight minutes to kill me. Just, I just, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> that's, that's true. Wait, 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 wait. I'm suddenly now thinking I'm remembering this war. Yeah, it was I in Media. I like, think I have a video of it on my YouTube you might. channel. Dude, you might. What's your YouTube channel? We gotta watch this video. Hold on, let me look. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna look and see if that's the one that I might be thinking All of. Right. Yeah, oh in this God. war, this is the one where uh, Corrupt said, they said during the war, like, after things started falling apart for, like, Vixens and Resbach, Corrupt said, well, we'll just kill them really quickly. And then we were literally just sitting on top of Corrupt's base forever, and they couldn't get us off. <laughs> Actually, Dude, you that know war what? He fun. does have the video. He has the video. He does? He, he found it? Stuff. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, the cl- is that the one, though? Yes, I'm looking. It's yeah. literally the only 1v1 I lost, because at that time, uh, we, like, I, I, we were decently strong, but when I was first building the guild and stuff, we didn't really have enough, well, we had enough players to defend, but we didn't have enough to have like a defense team and a good offense team, like a strong both sides on both fronts. So we ended up ended up like going and we our strat was to get a 1v1 for the node. And I literally you were the only guild that I lost to um, of all the guilds we fought in terms of 1v1 for the node. Yeah, and one v one for the note is in like literally the GMs have to fight each other or the the chosen champions, whoever yeah. it is. And at the time, I was GM of Hex, dude. See, for me, I hated those because I get nervous, and <laughs> it, it would happen like every other war was like, "Well, do you guys want a one v one for the note?" And then everyone in the guild was like, "Go on, Frosty, you could do it." And I'm like, "Oh my god, can we just try to kill them, please? I don't want a one v one in front of seventy people." I think uh, I remember it. this one. I think at one point you accidentally V'd. Oh yeah, I did. and we no, reset. Did yeah, and I think it was this one. You accidentally V'd, so we reset. And yeah, I was I, I, I was low key kind of salty because I was like, technically that should be a DQ, but uh, <laughs> technically I, like, that's <laughs> I think I did it trying to charge Grim Reaper or something. Oh yeah, like hitting space bar. I hit V. Yeah, so it which was still it happens was, by the way. It so, was so, hex. So don't give a fuck. Corrupt Resbach and Vixens on a thirty man node. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. starting to remember we, we, this. Yeah, we got completely we got told wiped, we were going right? to get 4v1'd at the start. Getting 4v1 so, at the start, so we're fucked. We got told that it was a 2v2, that we had walked into a 2v2 or something like that, and that we were going to get 4v1'd at the beginning. Yep. So you're we like, what? 
And then we just basically sat around our base for like 10 minutes, but like nobody showed up. So no, we no, no. Were... We started off dead. They took out all of our annexes. Resbok and Vixens both hit us right at the start. Yeah, but in, like in once we pushed them off, no, like nobody came back though. Yeah, so no one ever came back. There Corrupt was like 10 minutes of us mid-war. sitting there and nobody showed up. And we were like, uh... They rebuilt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that we war like, was Yeah, happened? Corrupt completely decided... I guess somebody told Corrupt that we had a, a lot of mercs. Didn't, by the way. DGAP never had mercs. But somebody told Corrupt that DGAP had mercs. And they're like, oh, let's go fight them. They have strong mercs. And they just stayed out of their base. We just had to defend the whole time. I'm surprised. I actually... Thank you. I think there was the Cho Nation uh, builder who actually helped me build, and uh, he actually taught me how to build and uh, gave me a pretty good spot for this fight or for this for this base that we planted. But um, we pretty much had to defend against corrupt, and I was like, I was really scared because, like I said, Decaf is still building. I'm still like newish or re re uh, growing, and I was like, dude, we have to fight against all these strong guilds, and we have to defend. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a fun one. I think Resbok, it was this weird thing where Resbok started hitting Vixens, but never talked to us. And then, like, I don't know what the fuck, man. I just remember at some point, we just said fuck it and went straight towards Resbok. Vixens died. Like, the moment Vixens died, we went straight to Resbok and killed him in, like, one push. And then it was, like, just us, you, and Corrupt. Yeah, so the 1v1 Bro. starts at like 144. If you guys want to check it out, God. one hour and 44 minutes in, that's about where it starts. You know what's really sad is I was I did a 1v1 against a Moo, Pariah, and I also V'd in that one. <laughs> oh my god, that's how you could tell. Like, this is why I hate these things, dude. I get so nervous, I started accidentally V'ing, and that V wasn't like an accidental button press. I like legit just autopilot hit v the moment i was cc'd in a fight and i was just like a uh, move was like kind enough to be like no, no no we could reset we could reset i think it was a cc i can't remember yeah but, okay i remember this yeah. fight like the, within the first minute i got you so low and you almost died and i couldn't finish you off i was so upset <laughs> i don't think my gear was that crazy back then i think it was probably I was probably like soft cap or near soft. I cap had about that. 210, 220 D- uh, AP. Um, yeah. I need proof of that, so, dude. It was a good, a good, good, good fight, though. It was like one of my favorite fights. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, there, there's a tangent for you. Um, so yeah, <laughs> if you want to check that out, we, I guess Res, we can link it. But it's what's the name of the video on your account, Res? Uh, I think it's called Clown Fiesta. The Clown Fiesta, and you said the time that the duel is out is at what time? 144. Hour 44. And... One hour yeah, and 44 was... minutes on the Clown Fiesta. This this sucker's got a big old whopping 89 views. All right, <laughs> time to get that up, boys. Let's make that 100. Um, it is a really, it actually is. So if you watch it, I, I'm pretty sure I left comms on the whole time. If you watch the whole thing from our perspective, it is pretty funny just how like confused we are. Like, literally the entire war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it's like one minute where we're like at 30% with all of our annexes gone, and then suddenly everyone's off our base. And we're like, yeah. wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah, that shit was funny. Um, anyway, <laughs> oh on to the reason, reason you're here, Blue. So I want to talk about Obviously, the data mine thing happened 2017. You basically leaked. It was a document or a series of documents that had uh, a bunch of hidden information about the game. Um, some of it pre, some of it in currently in the game, and so on and so forth. So I'm kind of curious how how did that entire series of events transpire from the beginning where you're like, wait, I might have something here. Like, how, how did that go down? So, okay, so it started off actually in the beginning of that year. Um, I started data mining the game and I was constantly finding little things. Like I found, um, what was that? I found, you know, the fusion skills, uh, absolute skills. Uh, I found potential new class. 
At some point, I even found when they first started to add on to, they first started adding um, controls for Mill Ranger. They at the time they called it Ranger, and I was like, I was I was posting things on subreddit all the time, but it was never anything big, big, right? It was just like little things here and there. So I guess they didn't really care. Well, this that actual week when I released these ads, I realized there was a weird file in the client called game data game common data unpack and i was like normally like the regular data sheet that we have in the in the client is just game common data it's a folder and you go through the folder and you see the different data sheets but they're like basically stuff we already knew it was never like hit like all the hidden stuff is actually zeroed out in those so i was like whoa wait why is it unpacked so i saw that and i realized oh my gosh that's literally everything so i un i un i I opened that up and then I saw that it was everything. And my first reaction wasn't even to like, like actually like try to keep it to myself or hide it or anything. All I did was my first thing I did was actually message um, a uh, a work uh, someone who works for Kakao. I won't say their name just for the source of our to keep them anonymous. That way they don't. Goodbye, Sky. It good was good vibes. No, guy. no, this was before Good Vibes Guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's dude. always our first guess when someone says kick out and play. It's like a, he doesn't work there anymore. They can't punish him. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, so I messaged a kick out employee and I told him, Hey, look, this stuff I sent him a screenshot is hey, by the way, this stuff isn't supposed to be unpacked. You guys PA messed up and pushed a patch that shouldn't be there. And so he said, Okay, I'll let the guys know who were supposed to fix that. Something along those lines. I said, All right, cool. And then, sure enough, uh, maybe like five minutes later, there's a hot fix. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they fixed it. Cool. And then I looked in, and I saw they didn't fix it. The hot fix was literally for a typo on the Pearl Shop. And so, <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, oh, so they don't care about this then? That's when I was like, I, I messaged a friend. I won't say their name because they're not completely. Public it was good vibes, through. guy. No, no, no. <laughs> somebody who works, who, no, nobody that works at Cacao, but somebody who plays the game. I was like, yo, look at all this stuff I found. And I was like, literally, it's all the hidden stats. I showed him. He was like, man, that's crazy. And then at the time, I knew there was like quite a, a couple other people who go through the client and stuff. And somebody else had messaged me and said, hey, keep this to yourself. And right when they said that, it kind of, I was like, dude, like as soon as they said that, that's when I was like, why would I keep it to myself? And then I was like, if I keep it to myself, then it's kind of like nobody else knows this stuff, which I guess is like cool. If, like it's cool in the sense of oh, I can like gain, like have this personal gain of like getting, you know, knowing these stats. But I was like, nah, that's pretty messed up. And then at the same time, I was like, I'm not gonna go through every file here. Like I'm gonna need help. So that's when I thought, how how do I like share it with people? And I was like, oh, I'll just post it on Reddit because I've been doing that this last year and whatever. Um, so then that's when I posted it on the subreddit and kind of things just kind of. Went it crazy blew from up from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you keep it to yourself, I mean, I don't know what the benefit. Personal gain would be knowing certain stats that other people don't know, able to like knowing that's yeah. like how to make certain stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Because, I just never so really would have sold one, your TED RC. <laughs> one one good example is like before the hidden stats were all like revealed. People really thought that there was like some hidden shit that made boss gear so much better than other gear. Well, Turns we knew there were hidden actually, stats. It's actually uh, not really that much better. Yeah, oh, it's I a mean, lot better. What? In it, it depends of the, on the gear. It depends on the specific item. In terms of the invasion and damage reduction, no, yeah, it's, it's not that it's much better. better. Oh my god, it's so what? No, it Guy depends on the item mean? itself. It depends on the specific item. All right, wait, give me an example, Rez, of one that's not much better. What do you mean? You can literally just get a fucking ultimate helm. It has very similar evasion and DR rates, and then you just Kafras it. This was before Kafras. But it, it really before. depends on the item yeah, itself. That's true. Some, some items are boss, the boss item is way better than the green or blue version, and then some items aren't. But yeah, I mean, like, the thing was just like, for me, it was just like, I, I just I've never been the type of person that's like I'm gonna keep this stuff a secret so I can get this personal gain off of it. So for me it was just like the moment they told me to keep it a secret, I was like it's kinda when it hit me, I was like, No, I shouldn't, I should let everyone else know. So it's like stuff that everyone can know. 
That's right. why I kind of like it. Kind of bugged me that PA had like did this said this thing to where it was like, oh, so like they try to spin it when they decided to release the hidden stats in game because of it. They were like, well, since the hidden stats are out there and only certain people know about it and it's not completely public, we're gonna make it public in the game. I was happy they made it public in the game, but I was kind of mad that they said that the way that they worded it because I was like, no, I've never tried to hide it at all. I've literally been completely open about everything and shared everything with them or with the public. So it was really stupid the way they worded it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, they were kind, the... of, they were kind of trying to like, uh, like make you out to be a bad guy, kind of. Yeah, they're they're basically just trying to spin it. So they're trying to like, uh, I guess you can say like, tell the public, hey, look, we're doing something good. Right. Yeah. Well, man, they 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 were they were not. So let's go before we talk in detail about the changes and the effects that it actually had. What what were the consequences? How did they reach out to you? What happened? What was the con? Like the contact. They didn't reach out to that, you. Was so one day you couldn't log they in. They never reached Basically, out to you. So what happened was literally the only contact I had with any Cal employee at the time was literally what I had said um when i told them what happened like the stats and stuff and that was it um then pretty much i made it public and that night so i I do want to cover this really quick when i made it public i had created a public sheet i was like if you guys find anything you guys want to add into it just post in this sheet anybody can edit i made that mistake and I was like going through the stats and stuff on stream and I opened up that public sheet that I said anyone can edit. And when I opened it up, somebody posted a, put a picture of a, a pornographic picture on there. So it showed on my stream. And as soon oh. as it showed, I exited it, but some like people like spam reported me. And so um, I got a 24 hour ban on Twitch. I know some people were, uh, had, were under the, I was under the impression that the ban was from uh cacao for showing the sheets but i never got banned on twitch for showing the sheets the ban was from that pornographic picture somebody posted uh it was a 24-hour ban but then the next day once it was up i was streaming i was still playing video and i had co- a contact with a friend who was close friends with a cacao employee that was that worked more in sh- in the field of you know um I guess you can say it's like player support, customer support, or whatever. And I was told then that I wasn't going to get banned, which made sense. It kind of lined up with everything. Like the initial decision was not to ban me, which lined up with, you know, me uh, the whole time, like within the first 24 hours or so, showing it on stream and stuff. I wasn't banned. I was playing on stream that whole night. I was not banned. But I guess somebody, basically, somebody higher up in Kakao, or not Kakao, in Pearl Abyss who probably doesn't even play the game, but somebody extremely higher up made the decision that like a couple days later in the morning to ban me and forced Kakao to ban me. And so then I got banned literally on stream and said disconnected by an operator. Um, yeah. Yeah, and everyone had the uh, free, <laughs> free blue. I remember on Roland stream on yeah. KR, I had the free blue tag. Yeah, and I want to uh, say, um, so there was, I won't say his name because you know, for this a- anonymity's sake, but there was somebody um, that's pretty high up in Cacao who went to bat for me and tried to get me unbanned. Um, even the Scooter Vibes Korea. guy. <laughs> oh my god. The greatest <laughs> of Vibes guy, dude. Oh he was god. looking out for you, man. Um, this person <laughs> went to Korea, and I don't think he knows that I know because like, they never specifically told me. But I found out just through other people that work at Cal. But he even flew to Korea, tried to get me unbanned, had meetings with uh, Pearl of his staff. And um, he almost got banned himself. I not banned. He almost got fired for it because of like how hard he tried to get me <laughs> Like, unbanned. now you like, can't play banned. either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to say, you know, thank you for going to bat and trying to get me unbanned. I really appreciate it. And then, like, in the future, like, other staff members have tried to get me unbanned. During the video Xbox days, uh, the Pearl Abyss staff from Xbox tried to get me unbanned. Um, I, I do want to say thank you to those guys because, I mean, they didn't have to do any of that. And they still did. They still stuck their necks out for me. <clears throat> so I appreciate them to that extent. Um, you know, thank you for that. Uh, so, what, yeah. what, would your, what would your gear be 
What what was your gear when you got banned? Um, on my Ranger, I was almost full tet. Uh, no, no, I just needed my helmet. I had a dry gi at the time. Everything else was tet, and I had a couple. I think I just had two tet crests. Remember when yeah. this was? When did the ban happen? Like it, what? It month? was literally right. It was November twenty seventeen. Like, yeah, at that time, Voltet yeah. was was so good. Yeah. I mean, at, at that time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, like, Messiahless was, like, Messiahless' gear insane, and he was, like, 257 AP or 260, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that, close, that's crazy. Close to him. I was just under him, if I remember right. Now but... you can't even get into a T2 guild. What do you know? Well, I, I could that at the time. With... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, I got Piotr Reza, flagging do... on me at fucking <laughs> shrooms. Fucking Piotr, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of curious from your point of view. So I'm going to talk about the stuff that I can think of off the top of my head right after. But from your point of view positives came from what happened for the game itself and then if there are any negatives that you can think of you're asking from, me from, from no 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 uh blue <laughs> from, oh, you I didn't, didn't do shit Rez. <laughs> you didn't do shit well, you, you said Rizlar, and then you just started asking a question well, I, was, I was gonna so. ask you you inter- yeah i was gonna ask you if uh if you had anything before i go on to this but yeah um well yeah, i was if, just in- i was I was just gonna say that uh, I'm I'm actually correct that the difference between uh, like a golden a, a ultimate heat film and a guy film in terms of the dr and the evasion is basically negligible. Uh, so a pen? eat a dick. It, it's not negligible. What are you talking about? It is. What are you the, uh, like? The heat film has more evasion, and the the boss armor has more dr by a lot, and the amount that they could go up is way higher on a boss helm. And that's the only slot where it's even remotely comparable. The other slots are not even close. You can't, you can't say, okay, hold on. You can't say, well, they didn't have calf respect back then. And then talk about how you can calf risk nine. Their base stats are way higher. All right. I'm going to read this on. All right, hold on blue. We'll get to the important stuff in a second because this petty, this petty fight is I literally right just I will check it again right now. Everyone, I everyone literally just Griffin Helm. I'm gonna go all right. A pen Griffin Helm has 28 base evasion. Who 60 had pen hit. back then? Let, Let me explain finish. to me. 28 base evasion, 60 hidden, 52 DR, 22 hidden. All right, we'll go to Heave. That's the popular helm that everyone has. Heave Helm is 27 base evasion, 85 hidden. 46 damage reduction and 5 hidden. It's like not even close. If you want to use Geath even, for now, example, since most people had Geath back then, you can even go so far to say as even that extra HP. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's essentially like an extra crystal that you would normally, you wouldn't normally have. Like if you have Heave, you, would have, you wouldn't have that extra crystal. Not to mention that extra attack and casting speed from having 4-piece boss kind of helps you with your crystal slots, gives you extra options for your crystal as well. So you don't have to have an extra crystal to max it out. And the helm, the helm slot's the only one that's remotely close. And right now, like, heat is great because, A, it's cheap to make. It's a lot of evasion. So if you're focused on evasion, it's it's easy to get evasion. But, like, when, to me, when the hidden stats came out, it showed me literally the opposite. I was like, holy shit, boss gear is so much better than than green. I mean, in some cases, yes, but not all. The helm is the only one that's close. The others are, I, I mean, yeah, the others are not even close. Militia offhand for the win. Militia offhand for the win. All right. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, all right, Blue, in your, in your opinion, uh, what positive things happened in video because of what you did? And if there are any negative things, what, what negative things happened? I think... So we all knew hidden stats were in the game, and I think at some point we eventually, like, at some point the, the community would have gotten upset without knowing these stats, and eventually I think PA and Cacao would have, or PA would have caved eventually. Um, but I think, I'd like to think me releasing the hidden stats 
kind of force PA to cave a lot earlier or a lot sooner than we would have, so we can release the hidden stats, so we can see them in game. Um, for those of you guys who like to say, you know, the evasion, the accuracy, the damage reduction. And I think, honestly, I, I feel like, because, like, like afterwards, like the aftermath of it all, I feel like PA has been a lot more transparent about certain things. Um, not, that's not to say they're completely transparent, because let's be real, they still have their own agenda, and they still have things that they keep in from us and stuff. Um, right. And they still, like, you know, aren't completely transparent. But I feel like they're a lot more transparent than before. Um, and I, honestly, I think it was really cool, in my opinion. Like, my, the, my favorite thing about it all is I think it was really cool to see how the communities from different, like, not just from NAEU coming together, but, like, um, Korea, like, people from literally all the different regions started to come together and help each other out with the sheets. I, I, I think that, that was, like, the coolest thing for me was to see, like, I was getting people from Korea with, like, hey, we want to help translate some of these sheets. How can we help? Um, I had people in China that were like, hey, what can we do? And I even had somebody from China who gave me, a, like, they were like, hey, we found this stuff in the sheet. Where do we add it to? I think it was just really cool. If you guys know the community folder that I have up, a lot of that stuff is from people from the different regions, not just you. I was just, right. It was just really cool to see, like, everybody come together and helping each other out to understand the sheet, create, you know, different, the different, like, things that were able to be created out of it. And then... Even Kyriak at BDO Codex, who went through the sheets, and we still talk, and we still um, go through a lot of different stuff, and we still like try to um, find out more so he can keep BDO Codex updated with the uh, latest stuff as well. I just, I just think it was really cool to see everyone kind of come together and help each other out. I like there were any downsides um, to it. I mean, should you talk directly into your mic? Um, I got banned. <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> I don't really see. I know somebody at some point they kind of were mad because I remember reading that they were mad that I released it because they felt that it didn't it, it uh destroyed any build diversity. But to be honest, I feel like the opposite happened. Um, because we know the hidden stats, we can now create builds that are specific to certain stats that we want. For example, high evasion builds, high DR builds more of a hybrid in the sense of we can like kind of hit for certain evasion numbers while still getting extra dr i feel like it wasn't it didn't really destroy build diversity but i feel like it helped to increase uh various types of builds we could make so I'm i don't really realizing. see a negative uh i'm just now realizing frosty should we even explain about what the hidden numbers were some people might not even know yeah so i was gonna go through stats Right, right. Yeah, I'm going to go through like a little list, but I want to say, I want to point out to that thought, that last thought that you had, Blue. I, yeah, I'm 100% with you. I think it created more, but not only that, like if build diversity, if you want to put build diversity in the game, then truly put first builds that are both, like that are all usable and viable. Like, because that whole build diversity argument is based on the premise that because they don't know it's bad, they're using it, which is so stupid. <laughs> Think about yeah. it. Like, that's what the argument is, right? Yeah. Like, like, okay, so people were stacking DR back before, like, Ergon Boots existed and whatever, uh, Griffin Helm, because th I think it was, was this before Ergon and Griffin Helm? Before Camo yeah. was out? This was no. Yeah. This was literally right um, during Comma Sylvia when Monchums was still party. Um, so it would have been Comma Part One, I believe. And, right. Yeah, before Part Two. So Griffin just came out. Yeah, right. Probably. Griffin Helmet was the latest boss gear. I mean, that, it, yeah, it, it's just so stupid. Like the the idea that build diversity is dictated by the fact that the players are too dumb to know what their gear is. <laughs> like they actually don't know, so that's why it's good. Like, just give us uh, multiple good options. I don't know. Like that doesn't. That's such a horrible argument. Yeah, um, that's like, hey, how would you like to, uh, you know, random draw your uh, your tax plan? You don't know what it is. You don't know what it's going to be, but you pick one, and then. That's what your tax plan for the next year is going to be. <laughs> like, right. uh... you, you know, the other thing that's crazy about that is how many variables they are when it comes to like and was on how good things were and the balance they tested based on a good gear back then was 200 AP with an accuracy offhand. Like, yeah, 
I don't think anyone foresaw like, hey, there's going to come a point where it's pretty normal for people to have 269 AP, 16 DP. You know, so like the balance changes at that point, like so much. So yeah, it, it's crazy. I don't know. Um, but hidden stats were were some bullshit. So I'm gonna try to think of that that also, direct. Did you, like, wait, did you just say common for people to have three sixteen DP. What? Did you just Sorry, say I'm, it's I'm common? For people to have 316 but, I mean, DP. It's it's pretty common for 316. Like, all right, think if you no. think about what <laughs> was like rare back then. Like back in the day, it was nutty if someone had like 260 AP, right? Like yeah. if you meet someone with 316 DP, you don't feel the same way you felt two years ago about someone with 260 AP. You're like, oh, okay, 316 yeah. DP. Like that, some people have that. That's like, that's all I meant. Um. But yeah, so all right. Do you have any off the top of your head, Rose? Like some of the things that weren't in the game uh, before Blue pulled the beans on everything. Uh, I mean, just the numbers. I yeah, mean, the basic thing is on gear, right? Yeah, like that was like the biggest thing was that everybody knew there were hidden stats, but nobody was certain of them. Right? It was all guesswork. It was all ten foil. Like nobody right. knew for certain exactly what was going on. And that made it really hard to, like, min-max because it was like, well, is this better? I don't know. There could be some shit that I'm not seeing that, you know, makes this item better than this item, you know? So having the I'll... ability to to actually discern what was good and what was bad was, like, absolutely huge. Yeah. I'll give an example. Um, on armor piece, or blue leaked everything, just showed... DP. Um, it would say enhancement effect, and it would say DP increase or all DP increase or all evasion and all damage reduction increase. But it wouldn't tell you by how much. It wouldn't say how much per level. It didn't show you any stats. You didn't know how, how much evasion was there, how much DR was there. You had no idea. Yeah, the whole thing was added after. And then on top of that, now we have the when you hover over the question mark over your AP or DP, it also shows the total stats based on the gear you have. Not the crystals, but the gear that you have in accuracy, evasion, damage reduction, damage reduction rate. Like, that whole screen is new. <clears throat> Blue? How does that make you feel? Um, it's also I mean... like... Go ahead. There wasn't a... There wasn't... <coughs> I correct me if I'm wrong. I could just be remembering incorrectly, but I don't actually remember there being like uh, evasion and DR builds. It was just DP builds. Like, um, right? so or am I incorrect? Or like people? Yes thought... and no. So we knew. So we kind of knew. Like we knew that the hit reduction and there was, and we kind of knew that there was like we knew the so in, you know how we have like the regular the sheet dp dr and evasion and then we have the hidden dr and evasion um yeah. earlier that year somebody released and then i released an updated one with uh, a lot of the newer gear and the newer boss gear that we had and stuff um we found the damage reduction and evasion numbers not the hidden but just the sheet ones uh for each specific gear piece we found those it was released earlier that year and then i released an updated one so for anybody who paid attention, we did kind of know the damage reduction evasion. We didn't know any of the bonus stuff. And, you know, the bonus is actually a lot higher. But we did know that. So there was some builds, like, for example, my Ranger, um, King of All Sound probably was the one who hated it the most. But I had a hybrid build on my Ranger that had some extra DR, not evasion, because at the time DR was a lot better um, because of just the lack of damage. But I had this hybrid DR build that was like, he was, he hated. But there was, so we did kind of know damage reduction evasion. We just didn't know the hidden numbers. For those at least that paid attention to the subreddit and saw the post. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so some of the other stuff that came out, I, I, I personally feel as a direct result of what you did, stats. Um, we have the AP, the awakening AP, the defense. Have the view equipped crystals that shows all the crystal stats kind of combined. 
Um, the set effects, your gear, but your costumes as well, and your crystal set to in this uh, in this screen. But I also think as more like an ancillary benefit, we got the percentage rates for enhancement. I don't think if what what you did didn't happen, we'd ever have the enhancement rates. Yeah, we had um I actually so funny enough in the like that year too before this, I actually released I went over data the sheets like like I said, like um they had in the client just regular sheets that were kind of like not hidden. Some stuff like certain things like just regularly in the client. And I went over the enchantment table with people then as well. A lot of people didn't believe me because everyone kind of had their own tin foils about it. But oh. um, we knew that base rates that actually ended up being correct um, later on was the with the actual data sheets with everything hidden shown. We knew the base rates then as well. I released that as well and I even went over it on stream. But again, it was just like, you know, everyone kind of had their tin foil and then. Because of how BDO's RNG works, some people didn't believe that it was actually kind of rate. Um, but yeah, so like some of that stuff was already known too, but it was just more like there was no definitive, like, yo, this is actually, like, I guess more just like because I was kind of not really like a, at the time somebody that had any kind of, um, I guess you can say any kind of notoriety within the community at the time. Uh, it wasn't like I was very, it was like people just openly trusted what I was posting. Right. One thing that for some reason didn't get added, or I'm more upset about, why we need, like, in my opinion, we absolutely need to know what the PvP damage reduction is on every single skill. It was yes. 30%. That actually was in the sheet. Um, it was in the sheet. Um, it was overlooked by a lot of people, but most of the skills were around 30% damage, like 30% of what you saw on, on the tooltip. Right. And um, we, that was actually, that, she was really, really intricate the way that it worked. Is it was constantly leak, linking to another sheet. And so that's actually one of them that uh, some of the Koreans were translating each different cell because, I mean, there's a ton of different skills. So they were doing that for a while, um, but it never really caught on. Like a lot of people didn't really, like, I guess right. nobody really like, looked into that sheet as much. So it wasn't really as popular, but yeah, it was around 30% of what most of the skills I know for Ranger and a few other classes were about 30% of what you saw in the tooltip. But it varied skill by skill somewhat, right? Right, right. yeah, yeah. See, but, like, that's, that's the thing is like, I don't understand why, why is that not in the tooltip when I hover over a skill? <laughs> uh, was it was it 30% of the total damage or damage reduced by 30%? Do you remember? It was literally 30% of what you saw in the tooltip, so the total numbers. Got it. Yeah, like that should just be in there. And then the other thing is like, and I know like uh, they've been super opposed to damage numbers popping up that basically every other game on Earth does. Um, it wasn't their, their official word is they don't want us to focus on text, right? Yeah. Appreciate the combat and be immersed in the game. But look at back attack and air attacks literally the entire time like when you're pve you're like kind of focused on that that sort of stuff i don't know like it cherry thing that needs to be an option a weak argument it's such I a mean, weak argument because you can turn is, it off you know so for those of you guys who don't know i believe that you can still there's still an option to turn on damage numbers in global test lab without yes. a mod there are and so yes, for any are, of yeah. you guys that wants you I guess I just want to say this. Any of you guys that want to test damage or anything like that, if you have a friend, you can go into the Global Test Lab and get you. There's, you can buy gold bars from the uh, Test Lab vendor for a cheaper price and sell it back to them to make for the regular price. So you can essentially get infinite money. And so you can get your gear to whatever, uh, whatever enhanced level you want to test things at and see the damage numbers on players and mobs as well. Right. But should that not just be in the game? That should a little checkbox, I mean, like maybe have it off by default. So it's well, off it is. Um, there's actually so the option for damage numbers is actually in the game. It's always been in the client. It's always been defaulted off, and you can't see it as a setting. Um, but there's a mod that allows. I guess this is YouTube, so I can talk about this. There is actually a mod um, that's out there. Uh, if you guys look at Undertow and 
careful that site can be NSFW. Um, Will you get banned for using it, though? Yeah, so that's the thing. So you do risk getting banned. I do know people who have been using it for a long time that have been banned and still not banned. But basically, all it does, it, it edits that, it, it um, edits that, uh, sorry, my dog. It edits that uh, option and turns it on. And then it essentially just patches that, uh, that file and turns it on. ASAP. Like the horse. All right. So the horse in hand. Let's talk about what just happened. Um, data leak, right? Basically. Um, was the one that you just released this week, first of all, are you still like looking in the file every time there's a patch to see if something comes up? Is No. So I actually, I, I posted this on the subreddit. Um, credits to De Niro's. He still looks, he still looks at every single patch. And he had given me a heads up, hey, they made a mistake again. So that's when I went in and I um, checked the KR client and I saw that, yeah, Prolibus messed up and uh, decided to leave things unpacked again. And that's when I released them online. Oh, that's when I released them online again. Um, this one's not, there's not as much. Yeah, it's not Is as it big. No, no, no. Name? It's, it's uh, this time around, it wasn't as many uh, files. Uh, so my guess is what happened is because you know how they released uh, this week's patch a day early. Uh, my guess is that Pearl Abyss probably were the devs were rushing things and forgot to pack all of it up or somehow messed up and didn't pack everything. And so they left some of it unpacked. Left without their sleeping bag or their tent? Yeah. Well, like the funny thing is, like lately, ever since I uh, since I had uh, released the hidden stats the first time, they would actually go and like the main, like I said before, when it's all packed up, there's just one Excel sheet that has all of the stuff that like all the hidden stuff is just zeroed out, and there's a bunch of different tabs. Um, they started to take that out and try to just have, I think, a binary version of it. Um, that's a lot harder to it takes a lot longer to. Um, read and whatnot for the regular person to open it up and read it and they were just leaving that file in there um so my guess is they're probably still trying to do something with that and so that's why this time around it's not as many sheets in this uh game common data unpack folder All right so say so i have a little aggregated list here of stuff people have sent to me so let me know if, uh, from what you know, have you been reading through it or getting people telling you? Yeah. All right. So first thing I... that I saw is the Awakening Horse have a 1% chance at zero stacks. And every time you get a, a, a hope stack or a fail stack or whatever on a dream horse, T9 horse, uh, it goes up, your chance goes up by 0.2% per stack. Correct. You, you're hearing too? Yeah, and so then, that's actually in the folder, in the uh, contents option folder under the servant table tab. If anybody wants to look at that, you can see it. Um, but yeah, it's there. Um, and then that goes all the way up to 100%? Well, okay, so Perlibis said that originally when they, so they added the fail stack because of like when we released the sheets the first time around, we saw that it was 1%, everyone got mad. So then they added the fail stack option. And if I remember correctly, that they had mentioned that the maximum, like the limit, is at 100 fail stacks. So if that's true, then technically the maximum the game will count is at 100, which means you get 21% chance max. But the sheet does show if there is no limit and you can continue to go higher and higher, then it'll cap out at 100% chance, assuming right. the server doesn't have some kind of limit installed. All right. Do we have someone with over 100 stack, or no one's ever gone that far? There's quite a few people who have gone pretty high. I think uh, they were talking about it in chat the other day. Um, but yeah, like a lot of the times, if there's anybody who isn't sure about any of the sheets or want or has questions or any like anything like that, um, I will go open up the sheet on stream and I'll talk about it and I'll explain it and I'll do all that stuff. So yeah, all right, two two new areas. Although this, I think it's been a little bit talked about even before, is Ortolita and Port uh -huh. Rat. Um, okay. Also areas? So, Port Rat expansion. Uh, funny thing about Ordelita. Um, when Kama Sylvia was first announced, it was announced in three parts. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. Korea got Part 1 and Part 2. 
And instead of releasing part three, they decided to push it off and instead release Dregan and create the com the part three of Kamasuvia we were supposed to get. That was actually supposed to come we were supposed to get Doom Horse at the same time. And instead, they released Doom Horse as its own separate thing. They created Dregan and gave us Dregan. And and, and Kama Sylvia Part 3 is now being released as its own expansion of what we know as Ordelita. But right, so uh, when NA was first released, you can actually find pictures of Ordelita. Um, they showed us. So they've been working on it since 2016. Oh, you think, I mean, it's probably different now than it was then though right or you think it's it's the same just been i mean like visually they probably kind of like add it like change it but when they announced common Soviet part three it's literally what orderly did so just the the region or do you mean all the content in it and everything like the lore and all that like they even said when Got they it. were okay. now talking about common Soviet part three they said it was going to be a part of a, a like a party area high level high geared party group grind which is now what they're calling Word Elite is a high level, high party grind. Then Port Rat expansion, is that just part of the ocean stuff or is that something separate? I'm not sure. I do know that they added um, some new ocean content in Korea. Ha they have like this new um, kind of system where you, if I remember correctly, if I read it right, it was like you had to deliver items to certain areas in the ocean and stuff. Yeah. Um, like a goods bartering system or something. Yeah. Um, so that's a full-on system that might be part of, uh, I don't know if it's Ocean itself or part of Port Rat, but I'm pretty sure NA will probably get it maybe in about six months, because, yeah. Maybe, hopefully six sooner. Six months, more like Hopefully years. sooner, but, <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, you guys barely got Well, I, I was gonna say, like, I mean, there's, that's one of the other things, too, that I think that <laughs> was stemmed from where, what you did. The content being released closer together obviously there's exceptions like manos and stuff but the archer being a global release the got short like really shortly after kr our balance patches have been really close to kr some of that stuff obviously could be better and like manos is an odd really really odd thing but man like before leak like oh everything was so far apart like everything like every little thing was so far apart like we didn't get i remember i was complaining about loot skills because they came out in like uh they were like announced in july they came out in august with their absolutes and then the revams came out in like at the end of september in korea or early october and we didn't get it until March, and we only really got to enjoy it for a month and a half before the CC changes happened. Gap, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, so I, yeah. I feel like that long, actually was. You remember how part long we had to wait to get Nuber? <laughs> Wasn't born yet. I and actually then have... it got delayed. XD. I have a theory about a lot of that, to be honest, because. So back when NA was released, the devs, um, there was actually like a, I guess a Q&A with the Prolibus devs, not Kakao staff, but actual the Prolibus devs. And something they had mentioned was that they wanted to uh, eventually have every region on the same patch, not a global server that people thought because of that post when Steam was released, but they wanted to have its own, like everyone on the same patch to catch yeah. up everybody. But and the thing then we is, found out that they only use that as an excuse to make an AEU more pay to win. No, I, I think I think that was actually their goal. But the thing is, is that um, we found out when uh, PA when uh, when we got the cron our uh, yeah the cron stone melting and stuff. We found out that um, because of I forgot which uh, CM community manager kind of made that rage post saying this is Pearl Abyss's fault, whatever. They had mentioned that. Uh, uh, they basically Prolibus said, if you wanted this, if you want this new content, you have to finally add Cronstone Mountain, right? And I feel like because originally Kakao was very, they were trying their best to prevent any pay to win. Um, oh yeah. And I feel like it's possible that all of these delays that have happened is because of now that we see that Prolibus tries to kind of strong arm 
uh, hold certain content back for certain things. I feel like that might be a reason why it takes so long sometimes to get certain stuff is because they're kind of like almost like a bartering bartering with each other. Like, we'll give you this content if you have this. But I do know from other people that work at Kakao that the other issues is translation stuff. Um, and then also Pearl Abyss kind of does things on their own schedule. Um, shoot for Gamescom, not this year, but last year. Um, they didn't get the, uh, I think that was when they were, sh I, I forgot what region they were showcasing. Potentially, I think maybe it was Dregan. Maybe something else, I forgot. But for Gamescom, they, uh, the PM that was working that event, he didn't get the stuff, uh, like the patch for it, literally until like, I think it was like a few hours before they were supposed to, Gamescom was supposed to open up their booth and stuff. And it was very unfortunate that stuff like that happens is where it's like PH is very kind of on their own schedule, on their own time and stuff. And I think there's like, a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't see, which is what's causing all these delays. Um, but I feel like PA still does want to eventually have us all on the same patch. So I think that was inevitable. I don't think it was from me releasing the stats that they started to speed things up. I think it was inevitable. It was just like, you know, the different like deals they have with the publishers and the developers that kind of might get in the way of it. Because I mean, if you look at Xbox, Xbox is getting content so fast way faster compared to other regions. And that's, in my opinion, I think it's because there is no middleman, uh, no publisher. Like, Parallel Biz is doing everything its own, so they don't have to do any of these bartering that they try to do to try and, um, like, keep content to get other things in the game. It's literally just, hey, we want this, we're getting this. Like, if there's no translation, like, they're not having issues with it's taking longer because of translation, because if that was the case, then Xbox would take a lot longer to get content that they're getting, you know? Yeah, and I've and, heard Xbox well, is so pay to win that there are already people with full pin on it. Uh, like, I mean, that guy, if you're talking about Mr. Pay to win, he is an extremely wealthy person that the money that he spent, well, he doesn't even pay to win as much anymore. The money that he did spend in the game at the time, he was like, he was getting, I mean, it was not even nothing near to what his like monthly rent was. But at the same time, he. He, him and others capitalized and made a lot more profit off of the accessories because um, at one point, ogres were like 50 million silver. So people like him and others that had a lot of money in the game were buying up all these accessories and waiting till they got higher to t flip them for a way higher profit. And so that's also how they made a lot more money that people don't know. They think it's just him spending, like, swiping his credit card. But it's a lot more of him being able to play the market to where he doesn't even have to swipe anymore because of how much money he's made in the market. I mean, yeah. What does but... Xbox have that's different in terms of pay to win than, than us? Um, at the moment, there's nothing. It's just that Xbox had a lot of this stuff. Um, they, they're, they're, yeah, the content is getting released at an accelerated pace. It's not the same schedule as PC. It's got its own release schedule. And, you know, uh, content has been getting released, like I said, at an accelerated pace. But in terms of, um, in terms of pay to win features, it's the same as uh, in AU. But, like, imagine how many more people would be absolutely geared out the ass if they could have pay to win PC from day one. Like, well, yeah. Originally, it was, we was going to be like that. The average gear level would have been so much, it would be so much higher right now if that was the case. So that's how it originally was going to be. Um, and I and I personally believe if that was the case, we would have gotten content sooner as well. Because it's like if we have the gear, there's no reason. There's literally no way anybody can make an excuse for us not to have the content. But um, what happened was during one of the betas, the the players um, for NAEU they kind of they were kind of crying about the pay to win. Which you know, in my opinion, I guess it, it's I guess they have a like it's it's I understand it. I mean, if you look at like Western MMOs, like it's not nearly as pay to win as a lot of the Asian MMOs out there and the Korean MMOs, um, just because of the different kind of society. Like uh, a lot of the, like in Korea, a lot of the players, um, the reason why it's so pay to win sometimes is because they know that like the Korean society, a lot of them are like businessmen and stuff where they don't have as much time to play. So that's why they give that feature. Um, obviously, they make a lot more money this way too. But then if you look at Western MMOs, like WoW and stuff, it's nowhere near as much pay to win. Um, but that's just how Western MMOs are compared to Korean MMOs. 
So it, it makes sense that NAEU was was crying about the pay to win in beta, which for which kind of had at the time Don Games EU develop uh, publisher um, kind of try to prevent the pay to win from the start. Sadly. I think WoW is pay to win. I'm pretty sure. Not really. No. I thought you could. Uh, I thought you could sell subscriptions for like in game money. That's not really pay to win though. You can, but that's not really pay to win in the same way. It's not in this, you're transferring okay. your cash. It's to not in this. Money. Okay, yeah, yeah, but like the mean? money, the money in game like that is not the same as what well, as BDO type in game money. Like the best gear you get in uh, WoW comes from the raids. Um, yeah, I mean PVP gear comes from literally playing the PvP system uh, yeah. and getting the currency from so, that. So it's not the still, same. It's it, not the it's same. Not the, it's not. It's, it's not. not the it doesn't same, directly. Tra- it doesn't translate into winning. The same way that swiping in BDO translates, into, it doesn't translate into winning on WoW. Right, because you still have to go out and get the gear. You can't. Just yeah, you still. Yeah, correct. You still have to go and spend the time to raid and get the right group together to raid and do dungeons. Right, but um, it certainly does make. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cite the people that I hate the most. It certainly does make your life a whole lot easier when you don't have to like go out and like make your own money. You can just fucking like. I mean, sell. the current WoW, not WoW Classic, but the current WoW, it's so easy to where you don't literally when you're leveling up and you're doing the dungeons. Because once you hit a certain level, the fastest way to level is just queuing for dungeon spamming. You're getting really good gear in the dungeon, like right. for your level. So it's not really, doesn't really translate the same. But uh, my point being that, uh, and again, like I have minimal experience on WoW, so these are all just things that I've heard. Uh, like when you get to the late game raids, it requires so many like extra materials that you would need to go out and get yourself, or alternatively, you could just buy it off the market. So that's like I mean, in that same it's theoretically in the same like thought, hours of work that you. I mean, in that same thought, you can just be like, you can just be like, oh, you just go spend some cash and go to a third party seller, which is in every. I mean, in that same thought, if you, if you want to think of it that way, well, then for literally almost any <laughs> other game has any other game. You can just do a third party sellers and pay to win. In which case, almost every MMO is pay to win. In that case, like the yeah. money you'd make from WoW selling WoW subscriptions, really, in my opinion, isn't really enough to just be like, oh yeah, let me just go throw some WoW subscriptions on the market so I can so I can have the gear for the raid. It's like literally uh-huh. going in the dungeons for the raids. What's up? The costume melting for Krons. What about it? Well well when it first came out, I mean the the thing everyone said is like it, it's so pay to win that this is what's gonna kill the game, right? Like that's what I heard. That's what a lot of people said. I actually remember <laughs> I remember that that quit they left the guild we were in they were already geared they said that to get their gear and now everyone can just catch up to them by swiping and it's not fair so they they quit the game so i'm, I'm kind of curious like your opinion on on that and how it ended up how it turned out and what your expectations were and if you like it or hate it or um honestly i couldn't care less either way to be honest because in my opinion it was like it was like, I mean, yeah, in a way, it does suck for the players that kind of just got, that were able to get the gear. But let's be real, though, a lot of those guys were, most of those guys were just lucky. They had the luck of RNG on their side that they were able to get their pin. Like, yeah, there's maybe some people who literally were grinding 24-7 to, like, constantly go for Ted's and pins. But let's be real, a lot of it's luck. Like, so, in my opinion, it's kind of like, it, it is what it is at any it kind of sucks for those people who like kind of grinded to get their stuff versus people that can swipe now. But um, I didn't really care too much. I think it will eventually kind of like for Korea, it, like for example, like Korea is like, in my opinion, their gear is still a lot better than an AEU. It's average gear. Um, and for those guys, basically their issue, it was like a lot of players left for Lost Ark and their, their explanation of it was, you know, um, especially when Renown score came and stuff, they kind of hated it because the players that there's there's a big discrepancy between people who swipe and people who don't. When you get start hitting that tet kind of pin wall, and so those players that swiped were more full pin 
than the players that didn't swipe and were Tetan pinned. So then when Renown score came out, it it just increased that gap so much more so. And that's right. kind of when like a lot of the players in Korea were like, you know what? Now that Renown score is out, this pay to win is actually making it a lot worse. So we're going to leave. And so I think eventually there are going to be a lot of players that I don't know if NAEU is hitting that spot yet, but I think there's going to eventually be that discrepancy of all oh, this guy, like these guys who have credit cards are like full pin versus these guys who don't who are more like tet slash pin. And so like their renowned score is higher. So it's changing things. Once people start to get more DP on NAEU, I think that might play a oh, role. But you don't, you don't, I mean, they up? removed renowned score though. Oh yeah, they did, but they, we still have APDP rackets, and that's still pretty big. Like, right? But I, we still had percentage boosts on AP prior to the brackets that yeah. were pretty massive. But so, we, like, we still have them now, we, and we still have DP bracket boosts too, which isn't as prevalent, I, I would say, in any EU than it is in Korea. A good example of that would be just if you just look at a, a recent Warrior video that was posted from a player in na um they posted on invin forums and uh people in in korea were like basically in the comments were literally like they were like oh why is somebody asked like why is it or somebody posted it but then somebody in the comments mentioned like why is why is warrior like so different or why do people get so hyped about warrior in, in, in a and everyone was literally saying it's because their dp is lower and i think that's kind of why like in korea warrior is considered weak um and sucks uh but naeu warriors considered really good and it's because their damage is definitely there's a difference in um the dp right um and so then the players that are like full pin in na or in korea their tp their dp brackets a lot higher even still going full ap compared to the people that aren't swiping that are like just more tet slash pin and it's like that difference is kind of huge, at least in Korea. Um, I don't know. Maybe in AEU it won't, it won't be the same. Maybe that it's just a player mentality as well. Um, but yeah, like so, like for at least, and like I, I guess a lot of it for me is like because I play a lot more. Or I played a lot more Korea than I did in AEU after the ban. Like I have more of like, I, I see, at least from my perspective, it's it's kind of like kind of skewed based off of what I see in Korea server versus what NAEU does. You melt cross costumes weekly? What's up? You buy and melt costumes every day or weekly? Yo, <laughs> if anybody wants to post some warrior burn costumes uh, in NA, I have like a billion silver. I'm trying to, trying to buy some before my account gets banned. I think <laughs> like... I think the... The adding of like the Kron costumes, that is the fastest mute I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I think the uh, the addition of the, the croning of the costumes or whatever, I don't actually know if that affected the, the population of BDO too much because I feel like everybody who was like super outraged about pay to win left when like the value pack came out. Like the <laughs> like I felt like that was like the big like Oh, this game's turning pay to win. Like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm not gonna waste my time in another pay to win game. Like, that's when all the like, I mean, I don't mean to like say this in a like a uh, with a demeaning way, but the, all the purists, so to speak, were kind of like, nah, we're fucking out this bitch, you know. At least that's yeah. what I think, anyway. No, that's there there was definitely like a. I, I mean, there was a a dark time. When that first came out, everyone's attitude on it was crazy. But I, I think everyone's attitude also was way more exaggerated. So I'll give you an example. I'm not going to... You know the guy, but there was a ranger in our guild. And the thing that I find really interesting about his point of view on it, because he was really, really, really upset about the cron melting, right? But that I always found a little bit ironic is that he had spent thousands of dollars on artisan memories and he yeah. was totally okay with that and while i get like i guess technically you could be more cost effective with crons although i guess if you're rng carried you could be more cost effective with either one right it just depends on your rng but so he spent thousands of dollars on artisan memories and pens both of his pen weapons below 100 stacks and then felt that it was not fair that 
people were going to catch up to him. So that's why I found it really interesting, Blue, that you, the first thing you said when you talked about it is that some people just get lucky anyway, that it's like luck based. Because like that's some of the examples of the people that were upset. I mean, there's obviously like people that aren't like that, but I don't, I don't spend money on artisans and stuff like that. I re-roll a lot, which is bad, like really, really bad. But yeah, I re-roll you, a lot. <laughs> they got your money benefit from me. somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really benefit me in game gotten when there's like a a deal or something i've gotten artisans if i was like desperate but um like i mean some of the people i know have spent like crazy amounts of money on artisans and and one of the things that never really bothered me that much about crons the the cost the, like the barrier to entry is so huge it's like i don't want to stereotype but generally the type of people that can actually put in that much money are really not that good at the game fighting or duels so they can be they could be 10 dp higher and you still could kill them it's like not going to be that big deal but the other <laughs> thing is like everyone thought i think everyone thought that everybody would be full pen after a few months and that this didn't happen yeah, yeah a lot of people were like i mean i guess a lot of people kind of underestimated the amount of money you actually have to spend unless you get lucky to like force full pin is it's actually a lot of money. Cause I mean, one pin attempt is how much money, like a couple hundred bucks or so. Like, yeah. And that's just an attempt. So yeah, it's, yeah, we saw a, uh, we actually saw an ogre ring on buy. I can't remember the exact math. There was an, a pen ogre ring sitting on buy for 62 bill. And you could, if you just swipe and sell costumes, it would, it would cost like $9,900 to get that ogre ring. Yeah, and that's assuming you somehow buy. Wait, NA has a limit, right? So like, you would have to even bypass it does, that but limit, it, or like, a lot though with the. Oh, okay. So Isn't you can it like sell thirty or something. Yeah, there's some people that could sell like thirty-five or forty costumes or something like that per week if they wanted. Yeah, that's oh, okay. the other thing I was gonna say. I don't like. Uh, I'm not exactly a purist. I've never really. I I don't want pay to win in the games that I play, but I'm not like this. I'm not going to play pay to win games. Like if I enjoy the game, then I'm going to play it regardless. But I don't like uh pay to win. I wish it didn't exist. I don't appreciate how they added the 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 as this aspect of pay to win to the game and then they've buffed it like 3 times in a row. I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> dude, can we calm down with the buffing of the pay to win?" Like well, Yeah, that's that's just unfortunately like the whole Kakao was like, okay, we'll do this now, and then we won't let you do the rest. And then Perlibus started to, like, strong arm, hey, by the way, we want this in the game now, otherwise you don't get this content. And eventually they're like, oh, you know yeah. what? It's it's time for this cron zone and stuff, so... Perlibus is like, it. dude, we're only the eighth richest company on the planet. We need to make it to the top five. Sell more costumes. Yeah, it's funny, I get this. Though. Oh, go ahead. No, you got it, you got it. I wouldn't say, um, like, at least in Korea, a lot of players that did complain about pay to win, like, to the extent, um, some of them actually decided to go to Black Desert Mobile instead. But I think it, I think it's so funny. <laughs> Black Desert Mobile is so much more pay to win than NAEU is, or than, um, than not NAEU, than PC is. So it's just like, I, I, I never, I can't fathom when people, like, complain about pay to win in one aspect, but then do it themselves in other games or in a different aspect or like well those people that complained about pay to win but still spent thousands of dollars in artisan memories like bro you're doing pay to win. like you're essentially doing something very similar just in a different way is like, uh is like mobile phone gaming huge in korea like it is in china um i honestly don't know i know i do know that a lot of koreans are a lot willing to play older games um, like lineage and stuff. I don't know about mobile, but I do know a lot of them did go to mobile. But I don't know how big like the mobile game is. I, I just uh, don't know how you can stop playing a PC game and go to a mobile for game. Because yeah. you can AFK, you can have it uh, auto <laughs> combat for you while you go play like PUBG or something on the PC. Um, Frosty, let's let's quickly, if we can, go through a few more of these things because Blue's got to get yeah. going here soon. Okay. Uh, 
so three new classes this uh you can confirm or deny this information i didn't source it or anything so i don't know uh female giant a goblin and a rudum was that that was all in the files you heard the same things um actually those aren't from the data sheets those are from i guess in the naeu client data patch that same week they left a character data unpacked that had files for something called pgw I don't know what which uh, who that would be yet. You would have to go look and do some more digging in that. But I mean, I wouldn't put it past them for <laughs> to just to just have like character them. files for future. Yeah, that's what they right. always do. They always add like character files. Like when during the data sheet of the first time around, they actually had three character files. They had files for three new characters in the game. But they quickly took that out. Literally, the the next day, they they took that out instantly because they realized we were going to the files. But it didn't really catch on because people were more interested in all the hidden stats than they were in the character. Um, a new race, which I I don't even know. That could just mean for lore. No know? clue. I have no clue about the new race. Yeah, it's um, probably just like a new NPC race, probably. And then another thing that was found is uh, apparently if you're at max karma when you die, like there's a a change that potentially could come that's like dormant or whatever. I don't know how how you'd put it that if you're at max karma and you die, you you wouldn't lose a crystal, which I doubt we'll ever get. Um, I think what it is is that if you look in the sheets, you there's a table that um, shows you. Um, it, it there's three different things. There's one sheet that shows you pretty much. The chance, uh, the min and maximum amount of crystals you can lose based off of where your karma is at. Um, the minimum is zero, and I think the maximum may have been one. Um, that's per death, and it has it set through PvE and PvP. It's possible that somebody may have seen the PvP section of that, and, and it's because those are zero, zero, and they may have thought that was PvP. Right, that makes sense. The, fa um, the fastest mute in the West. <laughs> is that? Is there? Is there anything else that uh, that you found or heard that we haven't mentioned? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Is there anything else that you found or heard or someone sent you in the more recent data mine that we haven't mentioned? Um. So the class by class damage reduction stuff has been slightly altered. Uh, that's already updated on the community folder um, that I have out. Uh, I'll give you guys a link to the Discord if you guys want to link it in the uh, description. Um, yeah. But other than that, I can't think of off the top of my head. But I do encourage everybody to go through the sheets themselves. You can open it up with Excel. A lot of it is in Korean. So I know through the Excel program itself, you can actually tra have it translate everything to English. Or you can just copy paste into a translator. Um, but I do encourage everybody to go through the sheets, kind of, if you, if you guys are just at least the least bit curious. And if you guys find anything, feel free to message it on Discord. If you guys want to put together a sheet of stuff that you translate or sheet stuff that you find, feel free to do that and then link it to me and I'll put it in the community folder and give you credit, of course, because I like to give credit where credit's due. Um, but yeah. Um, Hell yeah. Is there more to pay to win? Buried deep in there somewhere? What else <laughs> we getting? No clue. You'll be you able can... to melt energy tonics for crown stones? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> what were you gonna ask something, Rest? Uh no, I was just uh Oh, so you don't really play BDO anymore, you don't grind or anything. You're you're done kinda you said with MMOs in general, you don't like MMOs anymore? So I've never liked MMOs. The only MMOs I've ever enjoyed is Star Wars The Old Republic, and again it was for the PvP aspect. Um and I did play WoW literally just for PvP. It got boring because you see the same comps all the time. And BDO, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just really enjoyed it. Um I think I feel like just the competitive side of me always wanting to get the better gear and the fact that I didn't have to rely on others for doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't have to wait for a group to be in a raid right you trying your to say dog, your dog hates the value pack by the way yeah dude the, the, the yeah, dog you is... don't have to sorry um basically people are coming in and out of the house and my dog doesn't like people but yeah no, i don't have to fine, rely dude. on others for dungeons and raids <laughs> <laughs> so i don't have to rely on others for dungeons. she's literally eating and barking while she <laughs> <But she doesn't... laughs> Wait, that's impressive, actually. 
Come here, Mello. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think that's why I liked BDO so much. But yeah, right now I only PvP. That's all I like. So the the fun part about Arena Varsha and Trial characters is I don't have to grind. I don't have to get geared up for it. So I can literally just hop in. So that's pretty much what I do is I go in the Duelist Discord and just do Arena Varsha with all those guys. Um, with Yellow and Mimu and Dildo and all of them. It's really fun. Who's the best PvP or NA? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I do want to I mean, I think Yellow is definitely one of the best ninjas that I've ever played against. Um, he's really fun to play against. Numu's Tamer is a lot of fun. I think the only two Tamers that I really, really, really enjoy playing against and, like, find is, like, um, actually there's three, but, um, one of the two that I, like, can remember off the top of my head is Numu and then playing with Balance back in the day when Mac used to do Arena Varshas. That was that was fun too. Um, and then you know Amora. you have yellow as a ninja. Who? The sword. Uh oh, dude, 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 dude! Oh my god, KD carried. Yes. <laughs> Sorg, Um, Amora is definitely a lot of fun to play against. It's really, really a a fun matchup. I funny enough, uh, Sorks have always been my weakest. Uh, no matter what class I play, I always struggle with Sorks. Um, so. Yeah, but no, Amora is actually a really, really good sword. I love playing. Have you ever fought uh, Nayashi? Nayashi? You know what? Yeah. I feel like we have dueled a few times, but I would love to duel, with, duel them again because it's been a long time. It's been a while. Oh, yeah, man. Get, well, I'll send you an invite to our community Discord uh, when we're done here, and you can message him through there. He's in okay. there all the time. He's always raging about May. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's, he's he's like the nicest person. He never rages about anything. Yeah, he's he's a really cool person. I've, I've talked to him a few times. Um, I actually just talked to him today. But um, yeah. I mean, the one person I do wish I I always wish I could fight, but I never had a chance to at the time was um, Junior. Uh, he was a warrior. I think it was JR808, right? Um, oh um, yeah. Yeah, he was a yeah, warrior yeah. that I always wanted to fight, but I was never able to fight. Uh, Trey. Yeah. That yeah. Was yeah, yeah. Does he play yeah, anymore? Yeah, Trey. I don't think so. Um, yeah, he was like he was like one of the like uh, revolutionary. Warriors. His family name was not Tway, right? Or was that his character name? His trial character. One of the uh, two. I, I don't think, remember. I think his. But yeah. I don't his remember. character was Jr. Eight Hundred Eight, right? Yeah, yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that was Trey. Um, he was one of the best warriors, dude. That dude was crazy. Yeah. And like the sorks uh, that I played on my ranger that I really had a lot of fun playing against was Mac. Um, it was really fun playing uh, my hybrid ranger against uh, King of All Sand and hearing him raid. Funny, the <laughs> first time I met King of All Sand was I was playing hide and go seek in the battle arena with my friends, and he came in on stream. He was on his stream. And he was like, he was playing. He was he was gonna fight somebody. He was like, oh, let me go kill these kids really quick. And so he tried to fight me. And so then we ended up dueling for the next like few hours. And he. I could just hear like some. I pull up his stream. He was raging. It was so much more fun. And then like just hearing him, and then he'd be like, "Oh, this kid's bad." But then he'd die. I'm like, "Uh, <laughs> yeah." Um, Dude, but no, I had. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was gonna say with with King of All Sand. One time I saw him at a uh, at Arsha like bandits or something like this. Is so long ago, but I, I was on Kuno at the time. And I can tell me, bitch. Like he's like talking shit or whatever. So <laughs> I started fighting him, and a friend of mine who plays striker, who had way less gear than me, was fighting him also. And every time he would die, he was like, "Yeah, that's right, Frosty. Bring your gear carried friend to help you." <laughs> like the dude had way less gear than me, so it was just so funny. Yeah, oh, dude, man. but I gotta quick, say, you know, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say real quick. I was gonna tell a story. I one time made fun of King of All Sand in channel chat. I didn't even know that he was like looking at it. I just did it because I thought it was a pretty funny joke. I don't remember what it was. He literally tracked me down what channel I was on and then came out to Pirate Island where I was grinding just to kill me for <laughs> making a joke about him. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, whoa. I got to say, though, um, it's, it's always fun telling different King of All Sand stories because that was just uh, his persona. But um, I'll tell you, outside of that, though, like he actually really is a pretty cool guy. Like, I. I, I have formed a friendship with him and a bunch of other content creators they're actually pretty cool like to hang around with talk to off stream and stuff but yeah as much fun as i, I like to make fun of him and have jokes with him uh yeah. he's actually a pretty pretty nice person yeah. outside of the shit talk 
<laughs> well, we know you kind of got to get going here soon. You're you're running out of time. You're actually running late, I imagine. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and let you go. We appreciate you coming on, man. Is uh, you, anything you want to say to the, the people where they can find you or what kind of stuff? Uh, sure. You can catch me on uh, my stream. I If you guys ever have any video questions or the data sheet questions, I'll more than like more than able or more than willing to go over them with you guys on the stream, no matter what game I'm playing. Um, so feel free at twitch.tv slash WTF BLO. Um, uh, but other than that, um, that's about it. Uh, I think I, I gave them the link to the community discord and uh, in there, that's where you'll find the data sheets. If it gets taken off the Reddit and they also have the community folder there, I do implore everyone to kind of look through the sheets themselves. Um, you know, don't just go on blind faith on anything, literally. Go ahead and look through this stuff yourself and, uh, you know, see what you can find. If you guys find anything that you want to share with everybody, feel free to message me and I'll post it on the community folder. I'll just rely but, on Reddit to tell me. They won't <laughs> lie to me, right? Oh, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not those uh, cacao shills, you know? Cacao <laughs> shills, dude. <laughs> um, but I do want to say uh, thank you guys yep. for having me on. It's, it's pretty cool. It was pretty cool getting today to talk to you guys outside of... Uh, the the drama on reddit um yeah the mod mail. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool getting to talk to you guys outside of this stuff and uh frosty we'll have to have another 1v1 soon yeah dude you trial characters so i, I mean, go on my lawn you bring your sword let's do it no no yeah you go well, he's, to a ninja trial now, the main. he's a ninja oh you're a ninja now okay <laughs> well, i'm trying i'm trying out ninja we're we're giving it a test run and it's definitely as op as everyone says <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right yeah, for sure man thanks. Thanks a lot yep. for hanging out with us again, man. Oh, yeah, man. Thanks, and have a good one. Peace. You as well, man. All right. Comments time. It's everybody's favorite time of the day. Now, I did see a comment last week, Frosty, that was requesting that you read the comments because they want to hear your sweet, sultry voice. Uh, Do you want to read them, or should I? Uh, it's up to you. I can read them if you want. Um, you go, you re- we'll we'll start doing a rotation. We'll swap off like week after week. Uh, so we'll, the we'll thing is, turns. the thing is what episode. My voice isn't going to sound as good this episode. Uh, Sweet editing and compression. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Okay. So you want me to do them? I don't know. I'll do it. I got this. All right. Here we go. Uh, all right. The one with that. So we got twenty three comments. Sure. Or, you do quick, newest though, first, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort by sort by new, and then make sure you're also doing the read mores and check the replies. And see if they're good. If they're not okay. good, then skip them. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I'll talk to you after. Never mind. Just go. All right. Uh, here says. Uh, or Methios War says, Sork is the most OP class at the moment. Comparing to Sork is not the way to go. I 100% agree. Referring to uh, Etsu comparing everything about DK to Sork. I mean, it is a... Um, all of his points still stand. But yeah, I, I agree. Comparing it to Sork's probably not a good idea because it's pretty universally... Sork is in a place that's too strong. Even Sork's agree with that. Yeah, but aren't you in the camp of we should make every class OP? I I do. I 100% agree with that, but the changes are going to have to be, you know, like we're going to have to get something called like succession or something. That'll (laughs) never happen. No, who knows? I I don't know. Yes, I've always been a proponent of if a class is too strong, bring everyone up to that level instead of bringing them down. Because, man, it sucks to be nerfed. Like that feeling... I still sometimes look at tendon cutter and the fact that it doesn't have a stiffness and it just makes me sad. Tim says, I endorse adding more depth to life skills with the mastery systems, but what really bothers me is that it is once again gated behind more RNG. Need to get enhanced Logia gears so you can get the maths to enhance Blue Manos gear to make use of mastery system. I'm so tired of enhancing. Nobody with half a brain is going to list any of that shit on the central market. So that is out of the question. Maybe if there are more or less tedious ways to get appropriate fail stacks 40 through 60, other than running the Valencia quest line over and over again, it would not be as bad. For example, uh, what dunce at PA thought that 350 
this in parentheses, 300 fucking 50 was an appropriate trade in value of dragon scale fossils for a 40 stack when you can trade 30. And then he puts in parentheses again, fucking 30 to get a 20 stack. Maybe something like 150 at the absolute most would make more sense. Um, wrong. Although the only thing you have to actually fail stack for is the tools and the accessories. Anything that uses those the magical gems or black gems. Let me make sure I get the name right. Anything that uses black gem or concentrated magical black gem has a set enhancement rate and fail stacks have no bearing or effect on it. Side of that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, but I, I heard um oh god, I'm not I'm gonna Dmuck. Is that his name? Dmuck? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking I, about. I have to look and, and see what the name was actually. Let me look this up real quick so I don't get the name wrong and I want to give him his proper credit. Um also can we just can we just take a second to remember all the people that bought the dragon scale fossils whenever it was announced that they were gonna be used for some shit? And then it was revealed that the rate was like fucking horrible. And everyone was like, oh, we got baited. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. DMUC. Okay. I got that right. Um, oh, I lost my, my train of thought. What was I going to say? <laughs> why, why did I look up his name? I don't know. You were saying that he was going to say something. What was uh, he hopefully, say? It comes, hopefully it comes back to me. Uh, <laughs> interesting point about it, and I, I can't remember. Anyway, moving on until I can remember. Um, sorry, I remember now. So Dmuck was pointing out that people that enjoy life skilling uh, and haven't had until now progression at all in life skilling. Literally, all you had was your your life skill level on whatever life skill you were leveling up. Um, now you have the life skill level, you have life skill mastery, and you have gear in the same way that someone grinding or PvPing has gear. There's a lot of people that grind. You remember uh, Pan Man? So Pan Man was interesting because he would life skill and he would level up his gear grind or PvP. Like that was the only form of like, oh yeah, look what I got to because I life skilled. Now they actually have where life skillers can progress and it benefits the thing that they actually enjoy doing versus like doesn't benefit my gathering in any way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see where you're coming. That part was kind of cool because uh and and Jeffy the Wise too was pointing out that it was um lost his his passion for life skilling because it just wasn't competitive but that's what he likes to do so this patch has actually been or the last patch has actually been huge for them so that part's kind of interesting but i agree like the enhancing not everyone likes enhancing um a time where some of that stuff is going to be on the market like we'll see where the prices end up and people might I mean, shit. Accessories are on the market that really shouldn't be because people gamble enhance. And if people find ways to gamble enhance Manos gear and the green gear and blue gear, it'll probably be on the market. Or every time someone upgrades a, a yellow piece, they'll sell their green piece, you know? Uh, Dark Sky says, Snurtle win. Rosar? Uh, whenever he's relevant. All right, Ace is over easy. Says, Snurtle win. Whenever he's relevant. Antonio Billy Boy says Etsu with a heart. Um, Flynn Weed 95 says when he asked about what you would change to make DKOP, I instantly thought about Twilight Dash plus protection and CC. Smiling face. A Twilight Dash with a CC and protection would be so much fun. Um, Which one is a Twilight Dash? I don't know the name. Twilight so Dash is. Okay, you press F and they dash forward and slash their swords to the side and it does like a really high damage. Now, is that no the one where they kind of like disappear? Oh no, no no, they're still they're still completely visible during the whole thing. They like dash forward and slash you. 
non-collision oh, 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 reaction yeah, flash. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Yep, 100%. Um, the Shepherd One One Two says, "Which class Awakening quest did you guys enjoy doing the most? Also, which class do you think has the coolest animations and colors?" Ooh, woo. Frosty. Did you, did you enjoy any? I I didn't really enjoy any of the Awakening quests. I think the Striker one was probably the most interesting. Really, I thought the Mystic one was really dope because you got to see that like water tornado. That was pretty dope. Hope you had to swim. Anytime you have to swim, it's awful. Yeah, that's true. I know what I know what the worst one was. <laughs> well, the striker one didn't. You had to like fight a version of yourself, which I thought that yeah, was kind of cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Uh, I know the worst one. The worst one by far was which, without a doubt, I hated that one so much. It it had it was probably like the second or third worst one in terms of having to run around the map. But also, there were several portions where you had to swim. It was the goddamn worst thing I've ever done in this whole game. <laughs> I'll never understand how they, why they make you run around the map. It's so dumb. Yeah, it's really dumb. Also, what was the second part of that question? Something about aesthetics? Uh, the second part were, which class do you think has the coolest animations and colors? Uh, Zerger. Explosions. Oh, God. Come on. Zerker's animations are gross. No, the the cannon is cool, but like the axes and the colors are just not even there. The axes are like kind of tan, lame, but the, the cannon is so insanely fun and so awesome to use. It you listen, it's hard to explain to little beta males that have never played Zerker. There's just this feeling you get whenever you are using the fucking arm cannon. It just the the feel of it, the look of it, the sounds, like it's the whole experience is just one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced in a video game. Um I actually really love the mystic animations because I think they did a really awesome job with water. It looks really cool. And they have like a little bit of lightning to like accent how the water looks when you use water skills there's like lightning in there so it just makes the water look even cooler um i don't know man probably the sork the sork Sork? the purple looks so cool but i also really love like the red especially when they hit mobs when the mobs highlight red looks really dope for what sorry a warrior oh yeah yeah warriors yeah the red looks good dark red thing is pretty sick i actually uh probably an unpopular opinion i think one of the most satisfying classes abilities is uh ninjas like serpent and katana shower and blade spin and like all these things about heading the dead like these skills are so like nice to use like they're just kind of like fun in my opinion Uh, no no they are for sure although spin spree on kuno judgment on Sork when it actually works. Ah, oh, that shit feels good. I still right, maintain uh, that one of the funnest abilities in this game to use is Hellfire and I wish it wasn't dog shit. Ugh, I hate that ability. Make Hellfire great again. You know it would be cool? I, I If they did either A, give it Frontal Guard and remove the stiffness, but leave the skill the same, or B, make the, the dash like instant, like um, whatsoever. When you press 4 F, it just dashes. Yeah, that would be sick. Um, be all right. uh, I wish I wish they gave it not to turn this into a totally new discussion, but I wish they made no, it no, more good. different from which. Like I wish that they were two like, they're both magic casters. Like that's fine, but I wish that they had like kind of different identities and almost like different roles, kind of. Yeah, I think at the time when they came out, the sister classes were were pretty similar, whereas now they're like pretty different. The Witch Wizard are probably the closest. Because yeah, Kuno absolutely. Ninja Kuno Ninja are nothing alike in their awakening. Outside of the fact that they have concealment. Just not even close. I still remember um, when people used to say that Valkyrie and Warrior were sister classes. I was like, have you played either of these classes? Like, <laughs> what? They both have a Q-block, dude. Yeah, they both have shields. Uh, They're sister classes. <laughs> 
FM says, great episode. I really enjoyed Etsu and the more in-depth discussion of the class you guys had with him. Did Tamer ever have its OP day? If she did, I'm guessing it was in pre-awakened days. If she did, I started in January 2017 when all the classes already had their awakening. Tamer episode win. Keep it up, guys. Fun as always. Um, yeah, I can answer this question, actually. So the Tamer OP days is from launch to current in every 1v1 that's ever taken place ever. There you Tamer go. actually was underrated after Awakening came out. They were all so freaked out about their magic DP. Remember, they were like, well, we we die to magic classes. We take 30% extra damage and yada, yada, yada. But if you actually had gear, like if Tamer, if old Tamer was in the game the way it CC changes, that Tamer was actually insane. It's just no one had gear yet when we got this, um, like Rabams and Absolutes, but that Tamer was so good with all the Awakening. They had a three second, think about this, uh, dance, which has four different options. If you press W and R and B, it's Vermilion Bird, which is a fire skill that floats and has super armor. If you pressed uh, and RMB, it was a slash that has a different CC. I forget the CC off the top of my head. If you pressed S and RMB, it had a forward like little leap thing that slammed the ground that was uh, bound. Or if you pressed A and RMB, it was lightning that stuns and has a super armor. That skill had a three second cooldown. Could spam that every three. This animation of all of those skills was like two seconds long. So there's like a one second break between your super armor CC chain. It was insane. And then you could just throw in something else in the awakening, like all around spinner had frontal guard and a CC. It was just, yeah, that old tamer was insane because the combos were super long and it had a ton of protection, escapability, and movement. Um, yeah, Tamer episode one day. We'll we'll try. I'll, I'll try to reach out to some Tamers to to get one on the show. Uh, Jordan Crawford says, "When will Snurtle get on the podcast?" Also, Frosty, you've gotten your week of practice. Come fight me, or else you're a busta. It's almost been a week. Yeah, I think this was before he knew that you had rerolled again. Then what's then what's the oh okay. Because you had said that you had said that I think the, in the episode previous to th- that one, I think you had said that you had just re-rolled to either Sork or Kuno. I can't remember. You've done them both so much in the past month, <laughs> and that you needed a week to like get your feet back under you. And then that's when he commented that I think, if I remember, when did, when did we record that? It was Sunday, right? No, I I think I was already talking about Ninja. I was a I hadn't done it yet during the podcast, but I was about to. Maybe I don't remember. I already knew. Yeah. Either way, I really busted. only, I really only got it to sixty uh, like on Wednesday, so I'm kind of in a weird way only two days in. Next Wednesday, I'll record it too. I'll put it on the podcast. We'll record our fights, and then you're gonna be embarrassed that you lost to a, a coupon ninja. Um, noms, <laughs> noms, fatty kitty oh, says, dude, "Yo, you just made me remember Krista. I, I know how he's dude. doing." I know. I have a clip that I'm going to send you of the... I 1v3 in the Hex tournament, and Nahi was yelling that I was a coupon ninja, and it reminded me of Crix, too. That was literally is the that first the one thing from, I thought. Is that the one from Sarge's point of view? Yeah. Oh, you I saw, saw it? it? You linked it in, yeah. the, in the Discord, in the community Discord? I was so bad, too. Like, the <laughs> fact that I even won that was hilarious. Um, Alright, Noms Noms Fatty Kitty says, Yo, since everyone says large scale is a whole... Uh, other game or field to be in when it comes to your class. Why does BDO not just create a subfield of skills or even keep current skill set but overtune or tune them for large scale PvP and node wars? Seems like this is what everyone wants since this is a PvP game. And then just leave all the other stuff balanced for its own thing, 1v1 and PvE. I see it already in game now. This applies this effect in PvE but not PvP. So add a third category, node war siege. Hope I explained correctly. English is not my native language. P.S. Good podcast. Uh, they do have a system. It's just not labeled. It's called split damage. That's the siege and no war balance. Yeah, and that's the reason why even though Archer, like on paper, Archer should be doing so much better than Witch and Wizard, it doesn't because Archer split damage is so much worse than Witch and Wizards. Also, yeah, I mean, that I don't know if that sounds like 
relatively decent right now. The the thing is, is like you don't need a whole new system. You just need to fix like the few classes that are struggling. You know, if yeah. it was well, like it's fifteen of the classes were struggling and only three were good. On like we need to add a new system to make this work, but it's like fifteen are pretty good and three are struggling. Yeah, I mean, but here's the problem, right? So how do you fix a lot of the issues that some of these classes are having, right? So like the biggest issue, I think, and most people think, uh, I believe anyway, uh, with like these frontline classes is they can't fucking survive because everybody has goddamn 280 AP and witches and wizards just melt everything in their path, right? So it's like, okay, well, obviously they need to be tankier. So we make them tankier. Well, now we have, you know, Kunos and Sorks complaining that it's impossible to kill, you know, these 325 DP warriors in Valks. They say, we can't, even when we catch them, we can't kill them. What are we supposed to do? So, like, I think in a situation, I, I, I think in a situation where we could do that, where we could separate Siege from, like, open world, that I would, that sounds good, but it's not going to happen, unfortunately. I do have a simple. I I can't remember if I talked to you about this. I think I mentioned it on the podcast. But what if this is that this would be appropriate for probably Valkyrie, Warrior, Striker, and Mystic because those should be the frontline classes. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, and maybe Zerker, but makes. I know that's not. It's also the best range not... class. Well, yes, I know, and that's why I was about to say, I know that's not Berserker's role right now, but I think that's what it should be, personally. So, I know, so I know let's a just lot say, of people are going to disagree with that, but that's just my personal opinion. Let's say those four classes, though, Wiz- or, uh, Striker, Mystic, Warrior, and Valk, and then Zerker maybe to a lesser extent, but those first four classes would have a passive where they get production per character within a certain radius. Could be like a kind of big radius, like something you'd have in like a ball versus ball, up to ten people. So they get like fifty dr in a ball versus ball fight. It's the same thing, or not striker, a zerker, but only maybe only two dr or something, because it's not necessarily directly front line. I don't know, but that doesn't seem like it'd be that bad, and it wouldn't affect one v ones in any way. You literally could one v one someone. You wouldn't have the dr. You'd just get five dr if there's someone near you. But in ball versus ball, and you're near 10 enemies, then you have 50 DR. What are your thoughts on that? My only... I think that would be a good system. And that would definitely be, like, a good place to start for, like, potential fixes to the problem. The only amendment I would like to see is that, uh, like, change it to be uh, specific to how the classes are supposed to tank. So theoretically, if you're looking at these classes as tank classes, which I know we're not supposed to do, but if we do, then we say uh, Mystic and Striker are supposed to tank like evasion tanks, Warriors and Valkyries are supposed to tank like damage reduction tanks, and Zerker is supposed to be a health tank. So I would like to see those bonuses. If they did implement something like that, I'd like to see those bonuses be applied maybe in those ways that uh, in which those classes are supposed to be tanky in, right? Does that make sense? The Striker Mystic would get I don't like know, five, evasion. Six, six evasion per character near them. Yeah. Worker would get 50 HP per character near them. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, because in yeah, the, so because we talked about this in uh, Clash Discord the other night, or I brought up this, like, I feel like these classes are, like, they're very different in the way that they survive fights. So striker and mystic are evasion, Valkyrie and warrior are DR. And cause I forget what it was. I, I forget exactly how we got onto the topic, but I was just stating that like, I would like to see something where these classes are, have the ability to tank more in fights, but not just like a buff, like flat across all of them, like have it be more generalized specific. One of the things that I thought would be interesting is instead of uh, flat health, what if we made Zerker have like an absolute fuck ton of health regen? Like, I think that could be really interesting where it's like, so now instead of having like 6k HP Zerkers running around on the battlefield, they only have like 3.5, maybe 4, you know, just kind of like everybody else. 
but their health regen is out the fucking wazoo. So basically, if you don't one combo them, like it's gonna be really hard to get them down. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, but without that six thousand, they're just gonna get one serpented. <laughs> <laughs> one serpented. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you would still want them to have more HP than, like, your average class, but it was just something that I was bringing up. And then, like, uh, Warriors and Valks, like, they sh- Warriors and Valks should be in, like, I know I'm about to say something that is very unpopular, because this is how it was back in the day, and everybody hated the shit out of it. Warriors and Valks should be damn near in- unkillable from one person while they're blocking, unless they get grappled. Like, they should be able to withstand so much punishment while they're blocking. I don't understand why, right now, you block and, like, two abilities, your entire block is shattered. It's gone. It's worthless. Like, that should be how they tank. It should be, if you're not blocking, you can get CC'd at, like, any moment, and you're pretty squishy. You know, you're not, like, ninja squishy, but you're pretty damn squishy. But if you're blocking... Like, you are a tank. You are, like, literally, like, it's so hard to get you down. It's so hard to break your block. That's how it should be in my own personal. But, I don't know. That's, that's maybe, just... Maybe give them lingering super armor back and remove CCs. No, That'd be an interesting style. Lingering. lingering was such a, like, I mean, if idea. they had... If they had it though, but only really had grab and like one CC in awakening, one in pre awakening, would it be that no, crazy? People would lose their shit. Are you kidding me? That would literally <laughs> kill the one v one scene. Uh, no, like literally, just make it to where, like, I know that they already have a DP buff on their block, but like, just give them an ass load of DR while they're blocking, and only while they're blocking. Like the second right. the block drops, they lose the buff. But, like, while they're blocking, give them, like, a ridiculous amount of DR so that, one, their block can actually take a lot of punishment, and, two, they can actually survive while they're blocking. It Make it to where it takes more than one or two people to kill somebody who's blocking, you know? And, I mean, at right. the end of the day, grapples still exist, so if somebody's just sitting there holding block, you can just grapple them. Like, it's, yeah, uh, it's, I'm gonna uh, do that on my sword. Etsu will do that on his DK. Let's grapple him. You're a ninja. You have two of them. Okay, so you're saying everyone should just roll ninja. <laughs> I mean, that, that is seems actually to be, the truth. That seems to be what you're <laughs> prescribing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nom Nom's Fatty Kitty also says, "P.S. Good podcast." Uh, Ruben Rosales, thank you, Nom Stones. By the way, uh, Ruben uh, Rosales Rosales says, "Played her one day, or played her day one since release. Still don't know why I play her." Uh, he also added, "Once they nerfed the forward guards and super armors on DK, she fell off." Yeah. Big new five cream says, "Let Frosty read the comments. His voice gives me tingles." There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, the Ad- <laughs> I appreciate you putting that res. Uh, the Adomic says, Blade and Soul did it well with tab button as a CC break. 36 second cooldown. Free out of jail card. Uh, which when you CC'd others in a small range. You can see it here. Any links to it? I'll probably end up using my video from this anyway, even though it's my boring. So let's put this up on the screen here. Um, this is a minute and 30 like second I- video. I don't know if I like the idea of a CC break, CCing the person who successfully CC'd the other person. I don't, I don't know if I really like that. I don't think you should get punished for Let's see it in here. I need to like, see it in action. Doing the right thing. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It is not good for the video. Um, Yeah, I don't like it CCing other people. Also, 36 second cooldown is kind of low because like, sometimes a fight is 36 seconds long, so they're just going to keep CC breaking you if both the players are good. Yeah, I think a minute like is the lowest I would say it would be able to go. But again, like I think the best thing to do is to have it be both players get knocked down. That way, nobody benefits from it. They both just, you know, it resets the fight, basically. I think that's the best way to do it. He says there should be something like that, maybe with current V, or maybe instead of current V, it worked great there, so why not do it similar here? The The problem is there, the combos lasted so long. This is not quite the same. Like, damage output, the game's just, like, 
a lot faster pace. So it's hard to compare it directly to Blade and Soul, and the combo system is a lot different. I I'd think... also like to just point out again, like we did last podcast, uh, we used to have a CC break. It was called V, and then for some reason they took it away from us. Nobody knows why. So if V let you move when it comes out, and if it worked when you're knocked down, I think would be enough, honestly. Also, yeah. may- maybe maybe to add to it, let you use it in BA. But the problem is the meta is, and the community has decided that Ving in a one v one where you're like it's a friendly one v one, acceptable. So break be not acceptable too you know it'd, it'd be a weird thing i don't know well it's it uh, definitely would be it definitely would be seen as like it's one of those things where it's like uh you would find some people that wouldn't really give a shit and then you'd find other people that were like how disrespectful like yada yada i think it's like the worst thing ever you know right when i first started like uh, here's another good example when i first started playing bdo because every a lot of other games are like this in video duels were no pots. Yeah, exactly. It, it'd be exactly like that, where it's like you'd find some people that have like this weird arbitrary rule that they just kind of like made up, and then other people that are just like, well, it's in the game, so why would I not be able to do it? Yeah, dude, I remember people would be like, I, "Did you just pot, bro? Yeah, <laughs> did, are you that, potting? When did it? And it was like did... at first. Like everyone kind of agreed. I think once BA came out and you had like unlimited pots and people's damage started getting higher, I think it became more acceptable. But I remember even as as recent as like a year ago, I remember people joining hex and they duel be like, Are you using pots? And I would be like, dude, always use pots. It's a bad habit to not use pots. You're gonna have to use pots in large scale node war, every other situation, just use pots. Yeah, well, so I think a couple of things happened. The battle arena was a huge thing because all of a sudden now you didn't have to use like actual silver on pots, you know? Well, you yeah. still do, but it's like so minuscule, right? It's like, who cares? Um, and then also the weight of it, right? So now like people that have an ass little weight because they spent money on all the weight, you know, they can't just stock up on all the pots and then, you know, the guy who doesn't, doesn't have any, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but also, I think fairies played another big part of it when you could auto pot now. So now it's yeah. like everybody's just kind of expected to have the auto pot going at all times, literally twenty four seven. You know, so it's kind of like yeah. it, it's weird when you see people not potting. It's like, wait, what? What's going on here? Do you not like? What's what is this? <laughs> Are you out? Like, <laughs> um, and then actually, now that I think about it. The uh, out of game money too, like pots. The more I think about this, the more it actually makes sense. Pots back in the day was actually like kind of expensive. Like it wasn't. They were very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, like it weren't something that you would just throw around like willy nilly because you would be spending a bunch of your money on it. Not all of it, but like a decent chunk. Now it's like we make so much money, and the price of pots has stayed the same it might as well be, like, real pots might as well be RBF pots. Like, it's such an insignificant amount of money, you know? Uh, they also healed an amount that, for a lot of people, was unkillable back then, and now they don't. Yeah. Um. All right. <clears throat> uh, Gaggle, <laughs> Gaggle Dan, Gaggle Dan says... Personally, the only downside I see with Succession is it kind of makes me wonder if they should have revamped skills we already have or just add skills you can always use, but I can see why people like the idea of only using Pre-Awaken. Um, they did revamp skills. Uh, we already have. Like That's kind of what it is. It, um, some of the Succession skills replace the skill. Yeah, I mean, so you, can, only... you can actually only use the succession version, not the absolute version, like Ground Slam, for example, right? I'm pretty sure Ground Slam is one of them. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's, yeah, they they that's what succession is. It almost entirely is just revamping the older skills. Right. There's only a couple new skills and and passes. So yeah, I mean, for Warrior, I think the only one I remember was Solar Flare was the only one that they were adding. 
which they kind of needed to add for like movement purposes. Well, what about that weird like awakened animation looking one? Which well, it slashes like three times, and it's like red. It's the only one that actually kind of looks like the awakening animation. Oh, you're right. They did. They added pulverize. You're right. You're right. They did. They added pulverize as well. So they basically took two awakened abilities and then said, "Well, we, let's add this into the secession tree so that they have like a little bit like more, basically." So the, the solar flare, the solar flare is like a really big movement ability. It's arguably like the main movement ability, honestly, because uh, people who spam head chase tend to die. And uh, I don't know about pulverize. That's kind of a weird one. But if it does the same thing as it does in awakening, I don't know. Then it's a sustainability. It gives health on cast and then health on hit, which would make sense because warrior has like no way to heal in his uh, pre awakening. I may be alone in this, but the the animations that they added for succession on warrior and keep in mind, like I I don't think warrior's animations are that great. I like the color scheme, but I don't love the animations of their awakening, and I really hate the animations of their pre awakening. But animations look way better than both the awakening and pre-awakening in my opinion i mean they're basically just Pretty really cool. big really flashy versions of them honestly that's all it is take it kind of i mean kind of kind of but the the waves coming out are, are that's pretty new for warrior that's i mean yeah but it's thing. literally the same character animation and it's the same uh i don't even have it i have that ability i have that ability locked because it's so bad. Uh, shit, where is it? Uh, well, I can't find it. Anyway, it's literally like the same fucking thing. It's just now that there's some Musa waves coming out of it. Dude, I actually went back and looked. It doesn't It doesn't look like projection. It's just the same color. No, it's just it's Project- funny that they stole the idea, basically. They were like, how can we make this look different? I don't know. Shoot out two little like waves basically <laughs> they're like wait have um, we done that before no nah, i don't think so <laughs> uh chizinga says hello again i usually play fps but recently i thought about mmorpg i found yours video class tier list i liked the intro very much so i watched the other episodes of the podcast and an hour earlier i saw a tier list class from fake uniform i didn't see anything funny about it i was 100 percent cheated after i read the comments under the video and sorry for my english i'm from europe <laughs> Why you were? How were you cheated by fake uniforms video? Well, because I think uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was like sarcastic. Oh, it was a fa- it was a fake one. I I think it was a, like a sarcastic. Was the troll thing, one? Yeah. If I remember correctly, I have to go that's why it. he said. That's why he said that it made a lo- it led a lot of new players astray because a lot of new players saw it and then they kind of took it as like, oh, this is like how it is, and you know. Got it, got it. Okay. That, All right, that's well, that makes sense. Then, anyway. Zingus, I'm sorry for laughing. Um, new uh, new tier list should be coming out same day as this. Right, Frosty? <laughs> well, you could probably do it Sunday morning, actually. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Um, Murmur says... Oh, and thanks for thanks for joining, Zingus. Avenue. Murmur says, All I hear is, quote, I want DK to be Sork, end quote. LOL. Yeah. No, there's an extent of that. A lot of DKs are like that. I think the playstyle should be totally different on Sork. I know they always compare it to Sork and Sork's iframes, but DK's playstyle should just be different. I, I don't know what they can do, but Sork definitely needs, or DK needs something. Probably needs a little bit of a nerf, too. So, yeah. Um, Tyler Hickson says, just want to say that this was a great podcast this week. Don't get me wrong. I'm sub to fake and, his, and enjoy his content, but I feel like your podcast is very successful at having a chill vibe and just easy listening in the background at work or grinding. I couldn't even get through the Joe Never Fails drama segment in one last week. In the one last week. Thanks for getting stuff back on track. I always appreciate your analytical discussions in class balance. Well, thank you, Tyler. Yeah, Joe, uh, fake a very 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 high energy person so <laughs> something that like uh we're not used to having around here <laughs> yeah that's why i said in the in the reddit post that he brings a new and exciting energy that we just do not have ourselves yeah, at all typically the only time me or frosty tend to get really like excited is when we're like 
in heavy disagreement. <laughs> yeah, our our WoW versus BDO discussion during the Fake Uniform podcast was fun to re-listen to. Um, Marshall Kier says, another great podcast with an awesome guest. Thank you for the hard work. Yeah, thank you, Marshall. I'll have a uh, King of the Hill night soon. Have a what soon? Actually, King of the Hill night. Marshall Kier came, we did like King of the Hill with some of the people in the Value Pack Discord like four weeks ago or five weeks ago. Um, yeah, we need to have another community night. We're, we're going to do a community night. We should do one next weekend. Yeah, Can we're we going to do, do our best weekend? to get one. I'll do my best. It's hard because right now my, the band I'm playing with is recording. Yeah, you got a lot of recording stuff going on. A ton of hours. So I'm trying my best. So I apologize, everyone, for the delays and stuff. Maybe but. we can do it. Uh, maybe. I'm not stating a date. If you want to know the date, you need to join the Discord. Maybe we can do one not this upcoming Sunday morning, but next Sunday morning. Yeah. If it, if it works too for you, that'd be great. I'll look at the time zones. Um. Then uh, I'll probably have like King of the Hill after uh, Siege. So I'll post it in the Value Pack Discord after this weekend's Siege. Uh, Austin Lasseter says, it's possible roughly translates to I just made 50 and I'm pretty sure I can make 190 because my EP ain't small. <laughs> I forget off yeah, the top That's of my in head. reference to when I said that my guildies were saying they can make like 190 off of life skilling now. 190 mil an hour. Yeah, no, I 100% agree, dude. That's how it is, right? Everyone's like, oh, I make 190 mil an hour. And then you're like, oh, sick, dude. Like, let's see. And then they're like, oh, well, in that hour, I got two Tungrad rings. Oh. <laughs> dude, I don't know what you mean. I, I make I make 200 million silver an hour just grinding bandits in Medaya. Dude, I should have listened to Jeffy the Wise and got a fucking fluid collector. I got a an axe to try, a green axe, and I went and did like 150 energy and didn't get a single one of the gems to upgrade my other shit. I actually want to try to make money gathering, and I, I already have been failing miserably. <laughs> I'm so um, glad I don't care about that shit. <laughs> Dude, I I didn't care that much, but man, people are so hyped for it. I feel left out, so I want to I want to enhance my shit. Um, Lost Soul says desync is why why most class is in a bad spot. Like Ninja, I've got good AP, but I still have the same problems. Grabbing Witch Wiz are a no no. In the past year playing BDO, I've never grabbed a Wiz Witch in Node War. On my screen, I've got them grab, but on their screen, I am CC'd. A lot, man. Yeah, I think grabs in general just don't really work in Node Wars too well. Yeah, I wish there was. I don't know, man. It would it would be nice, like having a little bit less desync because it, it's just so prevalent, and it's problem is that it interferes when there's not even desync because it happens so much. If you resist, like now, even when you immune grab, people are like, "Up, oh, that was desync. That was desync." You know, so it's just like, eh, yeah. It, I wish it wasn't a thing. Um, Akima says, "When can we have a shy main on the podcast?" If there are any. Harry Boy 3000 says <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, no, we can have a shy main. I don't mind having a shy main on. I, I just, uh, maybe we'll get Sasha on one day. I just think yeah, he, he, Big he thinks shy so show. little of us. You know? <laughs> Big shy show. yeah. That's all the comments. Harry Boy 3000 said first. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for watching. Um, please share video um in your discords with your friends in bdo get more people listening active if you have any questions want to talk to us join the discord let us know anytime Rezar and i are pretty active in there sometimes we get into heated debates probably once or twice a week i argue with somebody in there about something um we have a lot of really cool and informed people uh purple for example i've been having really cool discussions with purple turtle he joined the discord recently he's a black rose striker he's really good uh van Gertz is in there He's also super informative. He made some really cool videos uh, on YouTube. So check out his YouTube video. He PVPs with uh, Phoenix with, on Global Lab on Succession Warrior, which is really cool to see. Um, questions, he's available in there as well. He'll probably answer some stuff. He seems super nice and open to doing that. So yeah, just uh, join the join the Discord, join the community, share the podcast, all that stuff. and And get out there i'm gonna try to stream here soon res um easy 
I, I'm going to figure out how to do an overlay to block my shit and have like a little bit of a whatever. And then, yeah, I'll try to stream like once or twice a week. I'm going to set a new goal. I was inspired by Fake Uniform and Purify talking about their YouTube videos. And I was like, I could do like two hours a week. It's not that big a deal. I mean, we already do. <laughs> not uploading shit, but I'll stream where it's all automatically uploaded. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and again, I just want to preface, we're... This week we experimented with a new audio system. Our voices are going to sound different. Everything is is probably going to be a lot different. I'm hoping the quality is good enough because this version or method is a lot easier for Reza and I. So we'll see how it goes. We experimented a long time, and I want to thank again Blue for coming on and also bearing with Reza and I with setup prior. We literally were, were like for an hour, and Blue was with us the whole time because we couldn't so. get this shit to work. <laughs> Uh, blue uh if you haven't check out all blue stuff and and check yeah, out the data mine more stuff of, uh, blue i'm gonna leave the uh link to his twit and also the invite to the um the discord that he was talking about the the data mining discord both of those things are going to be in the description of the podcast so if you want uh either of those things you can find them down there thanks but, again for coming yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out with us and...